Yes, ice is cold. Nice and cold. Oh, nice, nice and, and cold. cold. Okay, I thought you said ice is cold. Yes. So how did Pathfinder go? Pretty good. Uh, um. <laughs> Steve seems to disagree. <laughs> uh, well, I am, uh... If you didn't like that, give up. <laughs> because that's one of the better scenarios I've seen so far. Well, um, the one I didn't like about it is... I don't like that you can, it, it's not mainly, a, I don't think it's really a Pathfinder thing, I think it's also a D&D &D thing that Pathfinder kind of brought on board. Complete ideas, complete um, ideas. <laughs> um, basically, um, you attack, attack, attack all at once, this doesn't make a lot of sense. No, you don't have to. But, but You I mean, can do move, yes. attack something else. But you can do attack, 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 and that's You can. Move. You can't do that in this game. You can't. And there's a reason for it, because it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> in this game, you have one action a turn. That's right. <laughs> Makes sense. And 3035, Pathfinder, and uh, Starfinder, and PF2, they have classifications of actions, and the number of actions you get is different for each of those that I listed off. Uh, they they went simpler for PF2 by saying an action is an action, you have three actions and one reaction. In Pathfinder, there are seven classifications. The full round action. <laughs> Swift action. Swift. Yeah. yeah. Don't get me wrong, okay? But, that's... but, but yes, uh, PF2 simplified it a lot by just saying three actions and a reaction. Parents. Yeah, well, three actions was too too many. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, what it means is that you can die. Okay. I mean, you can die in one hit, pretty much. Yeah. Well... Especially if you're a first-level character. It is unusual for a first level character to die to one hit in pf2 it is much more common in pf1 in pf2 it would have to be a critical hit that took you to dying two and then no one treated you for two rounds and you failed your oh oh that's true it could be as little as one round. critical hit takes you down and you critically fail your stabilization roll. You're dead. But that is technically two rounds. One of which you're not conscious for. Well, I took 33 points in one hit. Yep. That's a lot. Yep. If that would have been a first level character to be dead. No. That would be unconscious and dying. Well. I am sorry I didn't explain that clearly enough when we played, oh. but it would be unconscious and dying. And since it was a critical hit, it would be dying two rather than dying one. Oh. Each round you would increase the dying value. Well, if I have a foe who's unconscious, they're a perfect target. Yes. I mean, absolutely perfect target. If I was any enemy around and I saw a guy pop, First thing I do is I try to set off or something, just to make sure. And there are people that are that much of a bastard <laughs> uh, in game and do that kind of stuff. I will tell you that as a GM, when the player starts doing that, all of the enemies will treat you that way. Well, since I'm unconscious, I really don't know why. <laughs> there is that. For the most part, 
Um, un unless there's something specially noted, the NPCs do not waste their efforts doing that when they have live combatants that are trying to still kill them. I got all these, I got all these three freaking actions. I would. I am saying that yes, you could. And then the enemies would basically focus fire and make sure you die because Unless they get there's up. no getting up or no uh, surrender or anything. I mean, you have just brought a bazooka to a knife fight. You want home a bazooka? That's good. <laughs> In many ways, the dying is functionally equivalent to taken out. Yes. You're no longer in the fight. You can no longer participate in the fight. Not. I know what you're saying, Scott. Right, it's not as um, a close of an analogy as you think. I know that you can come back from dying. I characters. I have care. I've had characters do it. Right. But from from an enemy's point of view, a character who is lying unconscious on the floor isn't a threat. Is not a threat. Wow. And that's why I said an enemy won't waste actions because if they win the fight or flee, you're not going to be the one that prevents them from getting away. Yeah. Yeah, well. Or prevents them from winning. Mm -hmm. And there are scenarios where if the players lose the fight, it's right in the scenario, uh, the uh, NPCs will ransom you. Or strip you and leave you on the road. Uh, there is a specific scenario where that happens. Well, yeah, I've, in ad and I had a character who three times lost a battle, lost battles, he, he got stripped, tied up, and thrown into a dense area of forest. Okay. <laughs> he, he survived every single time, <laughs> but uh, the, it was not fun. <laughs> the, the completely stripped is pretty harsh. The throwing into a forest is worse. Uh, I, I, I would have to check the exact text, but there is... He got very good at making a club out of a broken branch. <laughs> I prefer to a um, learn from Falcon, the Similarian, that you never ever leave an enemy alive. You have the opportunity to change that situation. Mm. Hello, Martin. Hello, sorry. And the thing is, taking care of it after all the enemies are down. Is one thing. Taking and care of it in the middle of a fight is a different thing. You're spending time. Basically, if you take the time to put that character out, you are basically giving the other guys a chance to take a shot at you when you could have been trying to take one of them down. Speaking I, from the Pete from the DM's point of view, or the GM, since I never ran Dungeons and Dragons. You end up having very few players who want to play with you if you have your NPCs killing off the PCs. So there's a practical reason why if someone goes down, you don't kill them as a as a person running the game. Because if you do, people will stop playing with you and rolling dice against yourself is not fun. There's uh, also there's a... Fun. If the, even in this book... Mm -hmm. Which doesn't like killing people. That's why they make taken out the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, even they say there has to be the threat of death. If you the threat of death is different than doing everything you can to immediately exterminate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
there, there are cases where that may happen, but the default case is you are in a battle against someone and want to prevail. You aren't necessarily intent on death. It's one thing to have a character die, or a player character die. Mm -hmm. It's a bad luck. Simply because there was no way around it. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to go out of your way to do it. There's also the concept from the real world of mission kill. You don't have to kill somebody to take them out of the mission. For that matter, not killing somebody can be better for your side because if you severely wound someone, they use then they resources. have to spend somebody else to keep him going and get him out. Which means they're down by two people instead of one people. One person. There, there is certainly... Now that works in the real world, but in the world we're talking about healing potion, mm -hmm. control... But it takes time well, to administer. So you still have tied up two people. It's quite after, possibly it's after the battle. Doesn't matter. Thank you for the host, Shuma. Yes, but that's after the battle. So it doesn't matter. But, if you're what, you're, but, yeah, but what you're talking about, what you have been talking about, is expending your energy right now to kill that character in the middle of the battle. That's what we're hearing you say. That's what we're hearing you say. And, and if you're, you're doing on, that, you don't even have to roll the strike attack. It's it's free. No, it no. isn't free. <laughs> it isn't free. You're laying it yourself open to attack. Okay, it takes an action, but you don't have to roll the strike. No, you don't have to I'd worry have about. You don't have to worry about. You, you, you don't, don't have to worry score. about failing. You do have to worry about those three guys with crossbows succeeding. Yeah, you you have not closed with another enemy to set up your next strike. You have not. If it was your first action, it took him out. You potentially could move to another enemy and strike them, potentially taking out two people rather than just killing one. Um, there, there's a number of things, but basically it takes an action. You may have had better uses for that action, and uh, the other side will react if somebody is acting like that oh. because you have just upped the ante. Now, in the case of non-player characters, if you want to take the time to do it, that's fine. In the case of non-player characters, because if the, they the, are the, not the, significant NPCs and your group doesn't care, yeah. the GM is about to declare them dead as soon as they drop. Mm -hmm. oh. That is in the rules. Yeah. Not in Pathfinder 1 rules. You can't go ahead. Do I have well, to look also... it up in PF2? I can find it, but it'll take some time, and I think we want to play it's also in game mechanics. <laughs> All right, Martin, you're not going to be here on the 21st. Right, two weeks. Noodler's Triple Tail. Noodler's, there it is. Brett, you're not going to be here May 24th, is that right? Is that what uh, whatever That's I said in the email. <laughs> I like the 20. My recollection is the 26th, but I have no uh, idea. May 26th. Oh, May 26th. I'll let you rush. <laughs> yes. I don't, I don't want to yeah. Yeah. May. Thanks. We are live, and I have updated my socials so people know we're alive. Shuma has already said hello to everybody. Hello, Shuma. Hello. She still doesn't get to drive the sub or the airship. <laughs> Does that mean she can drive the mystery? No. I guess not. You don't and is that to... drive or piloting? <laughs> I guess keep getting those two skills confused. You should, you should watch her in Grand Theft Auto 5 before you let her fly the boat. It's mainly just yaw corrections. Mainly. We kept going back and forth on it, and finally somebody found something in one of the 
books that clarified whether a boat was driver piloting, but I still can't remember which one it was. It was like there was a stunt that kind of hinted at a reason why you would choose one over the other. Yes. I'm thinking it was piloting, but I wouldn't be that far to some of money on the main one. Uh, what incenses me? Yeah, I were going to be incensed. I think you were the one who found the stunt that had the. <laughs> yeah, if you were going to be incensed. If I were going to be incensed. You don't think it's a stunt? Um, piloting it was actually a boating term to start skill with before, before there were aircraft. aircraft. Yes. It's not that, it's the 445. Okay. Um, it's not a stunt, it's a whole bunch of stunts. Ah. This. Yeah. This book has one, two, three. Is that strange tales? Yes. Yeah, it has three pilot stunts that are for there specifically for ships. Okay. okay. Born of the seas, steer by night, and unsinkable. Ah. So it is okay. piloting that is, it is used. It is piloting yes. that is used for for boats. According to that. <laughs> <laughs> Which, isn't it awesome that you had to wait for this book to come out to have any indication as to which it would be? <laughs> and I'm sure there are people that have decided to go with Drive on the basis of how their campaigns were working. Mm -hmm. I could easily see somebody declaring that the relevant skill depends on whether or not your boat is submersible. Mm. <laughs> I was just going to say, what if what if you declare it's drive and then all of a sudden you've got a submarine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Switch skills. <laughs> Personally, it's my belief they should have just had it be vehicles. And that skill covers all of the mm -hmm. okay. One less skill in the you know, to add to your pyramid, but well, that's okay. They wouldn't have indexed it properly anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True enough. No argument with that. So where did we leave off? I have forgotten. Let's see. Jack is writing Johnson's report. Uh, you have created using a special traceable ink. Ah, you're yes. creating and a traceable stamp. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you're no, no, I did the ink. Yes. You did the ink. You did the little well, device. It, it that wasn't goes the stamp. The there stamp. was, there was stamp. yeah, something under the stamp. Yes. Well, it's a For, stamp. forging a stamp would have been more difficult than just making a tracer that uh, <laughs> fits <laughs> under the stamp. Yeah, it's also unnoticeable with a stamp on it. Whereas there's absolutely no postal regulations against putting an electronic tracer in your mail, no matter how small. Mm -hmm. Have you run across war shipping? I, I don't think so, but I got the term rings no bell. Um, it's a modern term. Um, within the last year? What is it? War driving was driving around seeing who had an open Wi-Fi network you could oh, get yes. into. Ah, yes. Uh, war shipping? Is send a package that'll sit in their mailroom until somebody does something with it. That is a, a that, that is basically a Wi-Fi repeater point that you can use to research their. I see. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it strikes me that it would be easier to just get a Wi-Fi hook off by some more straightforward oh, means. No, no, no. no. This is penetration. Okay, I see. If you want to get access to a particular network, yeah, and ship it, them something that a, has a repeater. When, when your device is able to penetrate the network, it notifies you of how it did it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. and I had not heard of that. <laughs> thank you for giving me a whole new level of cybersecurity to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> Regarding one less skill in the pyramid. I think they wanted 28 exactly, because yeah. it's a triangular number. If you if you get so far that the top of your pyramid is at, um, ah, what's one beyond fantastic plus seven? Epic. Epic. If you 
if you got so far along that the top of your pyramid is epic, you can have all 28 skills at at least average. Hmm. The thing is, in some of the other, they... I can believe they wanted that here. Mm hmm But in some of the other fake derivations, mm -hmm. they've gone with the lower levels have to have each level has to have at least as many as the level above it. Mm-hmm. Rather than a, an explicit pyramid. Mm -hmm. Non so you can make rectangles. Right. Uh, non nonetheless, I I doubt the fact that there are exactly a triangular number of skills and that it that it's uh, two levels of triangular number past what any character is starting with in this game is a coincidence. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if they were thinking that far ahead because they think they, they were thinking that no well, they were thinking of this as a pickup game. Like you're not going to have your characters advance as far as advance as far as having the top of your pyramid be epic. Sure. But we may not be the only ones who had uh NPCs older than a hundred years with That's true. Really uh formidable. Out. Yeah, they even they even indicate in here that there are very old mm -hmm. NPCs. Dr. Right. Methuselah, for instance, mm -hmm. yeah. said that any skill that they don't specifically say he has, yeah. he has that legendary. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty good. good. Yes. Ridiculous. <laughs> but, yeah. But he's been around for thousands of years. Yeah. Is that Oreo over there? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I composed the contents. He wrote it. Mm -hmm. we, we have... With your we, ink. With mm -hmm. your ink. We have an envelope from wherever and a stamp and a tracer to put under, that's put under the stamp. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've mailed it yet. No. But it sounds like we have all of the components ready. <laughs> sounds yes. like it to me. I can't remember if Jack wrote the letter or not. I he did. He, he, he actually made the art roll for the forgery. And I'm guessing it was impressive. Uh, it was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't like one of his strength rolls. No. <laughs> well, one I, of his stealth rolls. I'm guessing higher than support. It, yeah. Just no <clears throat> Considering Some we don't really know care if the opposition reads it, we want to just find out where the opposition is. It still could be useful for them to believe. I made that sure that if they read it, they could make all sorts of false conclusions. Mm -hmm. Always a worthwhile thing to do. Confusion for the animals. Why shouldn't they share in the fall? <laughs> Periodically declare peace. People confuse your enemy. <laughs> and we're supposed to have 48 aspects. Twenty-four and four rounding. Okay. Forty 
rounding stump. I really need to read it. This sheet it is falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> Aspects behind it, but John Doe. You have anything that more caught up than I have been since? early in the game. <laughs> At this point, I'm only one behind. Oh. <laughs> Pretty good. So the next time we get a stone, we should actually get two. Wow. Oh. Just so I can remember. <clears throat> Spirit of Truth. Mm-hmm. Spirit of Ruthless Justice. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Spirit of loyalty. Loyalty. Spirit of what do you think? Mysteries. <laughs> For sure. Spirit of. You did have a, did did. a discovery. I, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was going to see if he could discover it. Uh huh. <laughs> well, you ladder science. And no, it's spirit no, of the discovery, the which relates interestingly to spirit of truth. Definitely not synonymous. I was going to suggest curiosity, but close enough. Inquiry works for what he's been doing with the character. I can't remember that you even picked one. Huh? No, I That's did finally get that. It took him a very long time, but yes, he did finally pick one. I think 10 years. But... Concentrate on who has chosen. It wasn't 10 years behind everybody else. None mm -hmm. of us knew what to, to mm -hmm. start out with. I mm -hmm. He did. Oh, okay. okay. I get corrected. That perfectionist. <laughs> well, John Doe didn't exist when we started the campaign, so I was a little behind there. <laughs> okay, so what are we doing now? That we have a letter and an envelope and a stamp, and it's all addressed. Are we mailing it? Yeah, uh, that would Any place in particular we're mailing it from? I think there was a detail that got left out. What was that? He said Where he, he uses the same one all the time. Oh, and we know which one? Did not use the yeah, same one. Not in that particular place. Okay, good. So probably any so mailbox, pick the mailbox stomping near right. his stomping grounds. Yeah. Or if there's some trick that involves where it's mailed, and not. Well, he wouldn't have. He he would have told us to do. Yeah. We had asked if it was a specific route mm -hmm. point because we were anticipating it was getting intercepted. Mm -hmm. Instead, it actually has to go to Australia. Or if we don't know that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what we know is that it needs to get into the mail, the mail and yeah. with that address on. It could be intercepted at the point that they sort for international mail. Yep. Yep. We mentioned that as a possibility, and it certainly is a possibility. If it gets diverted to somewhere in this country, that would make our lives easier. <laughs> Actually, if it gets converted to somewhere in the greater New York area, that would make our life a lot easier, and it's not impossible. But we don't know. Yep. So how crazy is Jack feeling? Fine. Well, you could add a third layer of tracing. Oh. Really? That's that you think that's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think Jack might find it amusing um, to trail the thing through the system. Um, I don't think that uh, his girlfriend would consider it amusing. 
and no matter how stealthy he is, he's not going to be able to go through all the places a letter can go through. No, no but, he but can follow your carriers. companion could. That's true. And the That's companion true. doesn't have to sleep. No, he, he, he does... He does occasionally complain about uh, about really boring jobs, but not as much as when I find him one that's actually dangerous to him, which I've managed more than once. I mean, he keeps complaining about a shortage of toilet paper. <laughs> and no, that's uh, that wasn't even something he complained about when he was alive. And he would almost certainly find it easy to track. Mm -hmm. That's true. The, the, the ink, particularly, mm -hmm. he would be able to, mm -hmm. to take note of. I'm perfectly willing to yeah, ask don't, don't him. ask him to track by the device that no. Annie made. No. <laughs> uh, the ink. Yes, yeah. the ink. And further, you know, furthermore, if the letter is removed from the envelope, uh, the, the ink and Annie's tracking device will part company, which would be an interesting thing in and of itself. If that happens, we want to know. I can just see it. The Alice Springs Post Office has a stack of empty envelopes that been uh, resealed, <laughs> steamed and resealed. It's possible. Hopefully, yes. we'll find out. That cheap kettle is a security risk in the post office. It's a high tech. So, are we sending? I think somebody is. A yes. ghost. <laughs> oh, to sending, track. sending a ghost? That's yep. up to someone else. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I am willing yes. to ask him to do it if anyone thinks that it ought to be done. Should be done. Oh, yeah. I think, I think so. it's worth doing yeah. <laughs> You don't care either way, do you? <laughs> yeah, I think sure it doesn't it's worth believe doing. there's an actual ghost involved. Yeah. So, yeah. Does your companion have a name? He does. Martin doesn't know it. It's a, it's a piece of backstory that hasn't been told. Uh, Casper. No. No. It really is. Spooky? No. Um, Slimer. What should we do? I would. Dusty. I would well, add the proviso. Called Dusty a time or two when he was still alive. You were saying? That. It's not worth tracing. It's not worth him tracing it. Past. If it actually, if it actually gets on a boat bound for Australia, mm -hmm. uh, then it's not worth. It's definitely yeah. not worth tracing anymore. Then, then, then we know that we have to somehow or other jump ahead of it. There's it's no point following. Pretty it easy to jump ahead of a mail boat. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is true. Well, we'd be several days behind said mail boat, though. In the airplane. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, well, even the airplane is going to be a couple days behind because it's going to get on a, on a train. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go to one of the West Coast ports. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's at that point we'll know that it's actually going to Australia. No, we get on the plane or the Zeppelin. I think it's on a plane that's oh, yeah. going west. We start following it. That's probably a good idea, actually. If it if it leaves, you know, if it leaves the New York postal system on a on a train headed for the west coast, then okay, it's not yeah. being intercepted locally. We'll. We might as well uh, might as well start heading in that direction. Good point. Besides, no, it's winter in New York City. <laughs> An excuse to go someplace else has its point. Yeah. Summer in Australia, yeah. <laughs> it is. Back Even Alice. San Francisco had better weather than New York, so this is true. I did San Francisco. 
discovery area, and it was a lot better than anywhere in the Midwest, and presumably <laughs> better than New York. Yes. Yeah. So, so I've been there in February as well. Only time. So it might be amusing if it gets on board a train headed west mm -hmm. and ends up being intercepted in Chicago. Well, that's one of the many other possibilities. In which case, in which case, we keep going to San Francisco and leave the damn thing in Chicago in February. <laughs> it's tempting, but we want to know what's going on here. Yeah, we, we do. do. All right. There's um. I wonder whose passport is your character's past. middle name Wimp? <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's just tired of New York weather. He, he, he really wants to go down to Cuba and uh mm -hmm. Cuba's nice this time of year. Yeah, that sure is. Number of things you can get a good deal on in Queen's Yards. Yeah. I was thinking of something else, but So have we have we then put it into a, a, a male receptacle? Is it being followed? Are we are we if, if have we made the yeah. decision? If it's Put in the mailbox, and yes, I'll start monitoring. Edgy? Yep. And you call your companion and have him follow this piece yep. of this letter? I, I, okay. Well, he had said that he would back. do that, so I assumed that he would. Right. Yep. All right. Before it went into the mail receptacle of oh, whatever kind. And we'll put it into a mailbox in Times Square. Okay. Because it's kind of in the middle of everything, and it's not near anything specific. So I guess I'm floating above Times Square. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Working on. Are you are you tracking it? You know, just beep beep uh, or Lord whatever. Lord. Yes, <laughs> I I am in front of the tracking device, decoding the letter, and every couple of minutes, nope, hasn't moved. Okay. <laughs> I am not going to just stand this sit no. there watching right. <laughs> the the odds. <clears throat> I, I don't state this as a certainty, but the odds are nothing will of interest will happen until it's at least removed from that mailbox along with the other mail. And I, I say intercept it from the mailbox trick would require more arrangement than Johnson knew anything about. Um, so let's see. Day 15 of February? Correct. Oh, shoot. I gotta write it down. I'm gonna go back to that diner that was being, um... Moms. Yeah. Moms. yeah. <laughs> uh, that was being, uh, extorted from? Mm -hmm. And tell them that the extortionist has been taken care of? Yeah. So, I'll walk in the moms. Okay. Uh, who's manning the counter? The uh, same guy. Okay. The owner? He may look a little nervous as soon as the he sees that. Cabinet. This? Yep. Bottom shelf. Okay. Right side. That's right. This must be right. There should be a. I want that. 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 And then it can go back in. Thank you. Okay. You are very organized. Would you like one? Yes. <laughs> I have some good news for you. Uh, really? I could use some good news. Well, the man who was extorting mo mo money from you, his name was William Johnson. Scarface? What if you want some of those? Um, okay. He is now the late William Johnson. Oh, well, that's good. It's not like that he know the same racket coming along, but well, that day. is good news. As long as he doesn't have a replacement, huh? Lined up behind him. There's a phone number. Okay. If he has a replacement, call this number. Leave a message for me. The replacement will become the late <laughs> Mister something. Mm. After we've had an uncomfortable conversation with him.
I'm going to go and pursue one of my hobbies that I haven't done in a while. I'm going to go to the New York Public Library and, and read. Okay? Sometimes I have a hard time job at it, but I get to work. <laughs> Do you really still have a part-time job after this period? <laughs> period I have an arrangement with the uh, oh. staff. In other words, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm guessing this isn't a job that Jack actually gets paid for. I get paid for. It. Oh yeah. Yeah. Independent contractor. Oh. Hmm. Very independent mm -hmm. contractor. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So, about two hours after the envelope is put into the mailbox. It begins to move. Okay. Call Dirk and say we have something to trouble. We got some pilot. Okay. And See if Edgy would already change the game to foot. Not necessarily a little bit. And I'm just going to be pretty boring. I think that's probably just going to another post office. Yeah. I was going to say the first thing to check for are you uh, are you low enough to get the uh, telescopic sight on uh, what what it is in? Nope. Okay. Stay Not in. even attempting that. Okay. Understood. If you can see, you can be seen potentially. Instrument only. Hmm? Instruments only. Yeah. I have heart. Instrument flight regulator. Mm -hmm. And once it's stopped, I will give an update to the boys if any of them are in radio range. I should be within radio range. I well, how make far a science roll. Try not to roll my score. <laughs> Are you sure that I fail on the night score? <laughs> Come to think of it, my score for you would be average. No. Well, yeah. Then if you actually spent a fate point, you wouldn't fail. It's not a minus score. Okay. It is it's not even a minus epic at all. result. Wow. Um, so yes, it goes to the local post office branch. It pauses there for about an hour. Okay. It then moves on to the central post office. I expect that I'll probably be seeing it stay there till at least dinner time. If they're in range, I let them know when it's set to central post office. Okay. We're all within range of the Zeppelin. Oh, the Zeppelin true. may not be in range of <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah. You can sound on the same frequency more powerful you deal. Yeah, like, you're not just you using your hat. No, no, it's not. But I, I keep forgetting that it's also a communication center. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So oh, yes, you can you can let all of us know. None of us have left New York City at this point or within range. Right. Um, so yes, it sits there for uh, well it's actually gonna be there till the next morning. Oh, okay. Uh, well after dinner I arrange for the staff to tell me if it moves. Wake me and tell me if it moves. Take shift. And oh, I'm no. making good progress on <laughs> the alien message. Yeah. This does not help me out. <laughs> very well. An stuff. essay on the nature of truth is that all I very already done. I know, but I, I was going to say if they got to recipes next. <laughs>
it's probably introduced some higher level concepts at this point so that you can do the next essay. It took weeks to get to the point where I could decode an essay on truth. Using one of the pay phones in the library, which is not going to be high tech, unfortunately, probably. Mm -hmm. Not to be <clears throat> operator getting the Bismarck 437. Okay. And Paris is on. Uh, <laughs> All right. I should get the high tech. That's so cool. Nothing's going to be bad. Uh, yes, and uh, one of Paris's servants answers, yes. Uh, this is Jack, is Paris available? <clears throat> she is, let me get her for you. Actually, about 30 seconds later, she is on the phone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, yeah. Well, um, we kind of have a process going on now. We're kind of in the waiting phase right now. Yes. So, um, I would be available to, I could say, uh, want to do speakeasy in tonight? A speakeasy? Hmm. That sounds fun. I definitely know one not to go to. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> Why? I'm willing to bet that you know any number of ones not to go to. <clears throat> because yeah. Edgy took off there and they showed them um, who is full of formaldehyde. Oh, that happens. Fortunately, bathtub gin is not of the highest quality. And he should use his pick the same. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, well, let's not go to that one. <laughs> we can go to, and she names one that you've been to before. Sounds good. It's a low-class dive, but I enjoy it. There's a lively crowd there. Are you going to dress down to the crowd? <clears throat> or are you going to uh, show up as you usually do as, as, as being spectacular? I'm going to dress appropriately. <laughs> Let's see now. What does that well, there's mean? an answer without an answer. <laughs> <laughs> what do I have to do to figure out what that means? <laughs> Hopefully it's not empathy. Because I'm going to fail my role. Right? Actually, yes, it <laughs> is. Because you're trying to understand what somebody else what means. somebody is, else means. Yes. I shouldn't have said that. To I you? Mean, so I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> well, the one question a historian is least likely to be able to answer is what were these people well, thinking? Well, they got a good. <laughs> hey! So yeah, she's gonna she's going to dress like a flapper. I mean, she's gonna the, the short fringy dress and. It's going to be a very nice flapper dress, <laughs> but it's not going to, you know, it's she's not, not going to be out of place. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a um, unique gown by so-and-so. No. <laughs> it's not going to be this. Something, Something like that, it. yes. I've been carrying this all these years because I haven't opened up and there it was, 1920s. I'm like, wow. Who would have thought that Macy would be so different? There were a couple of people that showed up at New Year's party, right? Mm -hmm. Was that dressed in 1920s mm -hmm. style, saying, well, it's the 20s, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, I'm saying if this is Jack. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Really not. <clears throat> the shadow, isn't it? Yeah. It's a, it <laughs> also, Jack would not wear a bright red scarf, I don't think. Probably not. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he dresses all in black, is what, yeah. what you've said before. Yeah. But, well, they do have to make it look better. Yeah, it's for Just, uh, it was, This is part of, uh, influenced by the by the shadow so-and-so <clears throat> theme. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, shadow stories that are right out of like Batman comics. And they basically fit the comic book story in the world. Like, okay. And oh, the wow. people, the guy who was first published DC Comics, which stands for Detective Comics, he used to do pulps. And that was his business before he did comics. <coughs> A lot of difference between them is many people who get in, although the obvious rejoinder is that the comics have a lot more pictures. Uh, the Pulps had a the couple had per the story. Yeah. Per but story. you're right. You're the right. comics have but, many more. And they're the same size, it's just the Pulps are thicker. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, the height and the width are more identical. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like White Magazine or whatever, it's just, you know, huge. No. Found out for playing this game that I know so little about the Pulps. <laughs> yeah, I mean you'd probably know more about World War One and World War Two, and then in between it's well, I don't even yeah. in the thirties, a little more in the thirties. Yeah, because I concentrated on the Great Depression and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and the um, beginnings of World War Two. You know, yep, it was yep. rise to power and all that stuff. You know, but the twenties, it's like. You know, Charleston, oh, you. you know, Tommy Guns, you know, I, mm, bootlegging, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of... Yeah, know. I've had to do tons of research on the 20s because I knew so very little yeah, about it's that, unbelievable. that decade. All right. So, you're going to a speakeasy. Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody else have any plans? You're you're hovering over a post office, yeah, the central post office specifically. Yeah. Over so, hey, something sounds super exciting. In the middle of the night, yeah. Are we and and your ghost is actually at the same, mm-hmm. you know, uh, in the post office yeah. itself. Mm-hmm. I I told him any <clears throat> Anytime the letter is staying put and seems like it's likely to for uh, seems like it's likely to for a while, come you know, come back and tell me if anything interesting has happened. Yeah. You didn't say that to put it some way. You can summon him You can summon him, tell him that, and back. then send him back. <laughs> so I didn't think I didn't think of it the first time, but as soon as we heard that the letter had gone to the nearest post office branch and stopped there. Oh, I should have told him that. Right. So I call him to come to me and say, you know, report in whenever you think you can without the track of the letter. Wow. January 4, 1883. Okay, then. So, um, yes, he'll well, come back, uh, you know, at, at that mm-hmm. second uh, list at the main boss, post office and say, right. well, First it's in a large locked room right now, and but nobody seems fine. to be doing anything with it. So, intercepted early in its uh, yeah, journey it hypothesis is looking weird. Yeah, there was a special it's 70. Unless it, I mean, 72 was the last I, it, Somebody could be sneaking into that room right now. Mm-hmm. Could. Um, Jack could easily do it. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't take something to someone of Jack's caliber, though. It does not, no. Ask Cornelia what she would like to do this evening. Um, uh, so yeah, we could uh, have a nice dinner out. Okay. Those are the ginger out choice, right? Well, they're not out choice, but they're Newman's own, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll pass on the ginger. 
Really well alternating them with orange candy when the ginger gets too hot, I switch and switch it off. Um, and spark if you'd like to go dark. Make a mystery scroll for your later next one. That is let's see. So based off my mysteries, that's a perfect. Yeah, <coughs> yeah it's not moving. <laughs> That might be equipment in the lab where it seems to have legs. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, our lab's terrible. We set something up to come back the next day, half your equipment's gone. Really? Yeah. Ours just moved. It didn't actually disappear usually. <laughs> yep. The so monitoring I, instruments did. The analysis instruments did. Yeah, I tell people never ever fall asleep in our lab. You'll wake up with no phone, no lock, no pants. Nothing sacred. They steal everything. <clears throat> hmm. I mean, there's there. Unbelievable. Aren't there aren't there consequences if somebody steals something from not just your cubicle? I mean, like a piece of test equipment that is set up for a project. Uh -huh. They'll steal it. Yeah. Somebody went and took a whole rack. Wheeled out of the lab. Where to? The lab. Don't you know? The lab. Okay. And it wasn't there. It was. <laughs> That's something that people should get fired over. But you didn't belong to the first hand yeah, system. Well, it's assigned to be at a place, isn't it? Not assigned. So you, they don't do that. It wasn't like who it wasn't bought by the project that was using it. It's just in the lab. Okay, no. so it's not really stealing, it just sort of floats around. Well, someone set it up on a bench, and then someone came by and made a piece of wood. Evidently, oh, I need a signal generator. Here's one on this bench. I'll just unplug it and take it away. <clears throat> I need a power supply. Oh, there's one right here. <clears throat> That's, yeah. Not an effective way to run no. a lab. <sighs> Things like that should be purchased and assigned to a project. <laughs> well, we're trying to save money here. Hmm. Or no, inventory management is important. What? What? <laughs> management. You don't need inventory management. This isn't Honeywell. Honeywell inventory management. You had a person there. You had a person. You had to pay them that. Yes, but then you wouldn't have a project suddenly delayed because somebody stole their signal generator. <laughs> well, you ask our management for the safe cost of doing business. No. <laughs> That's wrong. It's really wrong. Yeah. Somebody stole my signal generator seven days into an eight-day run. Therefore, we are not going to make deadlines, and we're going to have to pay a, a, a late a, 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 a late penalty fee. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't, we're not that dumb either, so we're not that. Uh, 
At least they have yeah. do. <laughs> I mean, do you have to like physically lock it to the bench somehow? Or that would help. Probably wouldn't that would help. help. I used to take our air transceiver and I would put it inside of the box that I designed. And no one could see that it was there because people could steal them all the time. Well, now they figured out that they're inside the box. They take the box apart and steal them right out of the box. That, okay. That is a stupid way to run a company. Yes, it is. That, that's asset and inventory management. Oh, have we heard anything to indicate uh, yes. <laughs> that this company is ever. Well, it's smart. still in business <laughs> somehow. It might be lot. Might be creative accounting. Oh, well, it, it, part of it is they don't pay their their vendors apparently, but um, yeah, uh, there's always that one. It saves money. I'm sure it does. <laughs> I would never be a vendor for your company. I don't know who would? <laughs> oh, one of our engineering managers uh, gave us notice. Uh, yesterday. Well, it, at least you haven't been telling us about large layoffs recently. I mean, before there were these huge layoffs that you kept telling us. About. That hasn't happened for a while, has it? The reason that happened for a while is we have more work we have to do it. Yeah. The building's too small. Okay. So, I don't know if they actually managed to actually get the lease for the building nearby. But, I mean, they were going to move us, engineering, out from where we were. And then, but they needed to put in a freight elevator because we're in the lower level and they can't put heavy stuff above so it would fall through. <laughs> yes. Well, they found out and they said, oh, a free elevator costs about $100,000. It costs $1 million plus. Uh. And they had that, they said, okay, we can't afford to do this. Right. So they found a building somewhat nearby and they're supposed to lease that. I don't know if they got the lease or not. Mm. All I know is that I'm not moving, and that's good. <laughs> yes. But you know, we have more business than we right. to do it. Okay. I don't know how. <laughs> well, I mean, you deliver product, so that's. I mean, I can understand why you have business. I just don't understand why you have vendors. I don't know who it is who would do business with somebody who doesn't. Pay their vendors. Pay their bills. Oh. This way. Before we merge, people from the other company would come and they'd say, So, how often do you get no bid? And our procurement people said, Well, we never get no bid. Never. We, we send out quotes and we always get the bids. Okay. Well, now that they're doing things the new way, now we're starting to get no bids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, look at how many people I'm Trump got to work for him. Yeah. I'm still trying to get somebody paid for when we delivered product in the last summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can understand why you're not getting bids on things because they know that though it doesn't matter what the bid is, you're not going to pay them. <laughs> You should feel proud that you're supporting the aerospace industry. Um, no, 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 there's other I think I'll by Amtrak, thank you. Well, <coughs> I mean, I, he's not telling us that they're providing bad product. That's true. Though, if you, if you, if all of your vendors decide they're not not going to sell anything to you, you can't really provide any product at all. Eventually. <laughs> details, details, details. And that's in the future. Right now, they're going, going strong. <laughs> the typical business mentality. Can't see beyond the end of that cash register. Uh -huh. <clears throat> okay, well. Uh, well, hopefully, Paris and I will have a great time to speakeasy. And Paris won't get any fights. You have a great time at the speakeasy. Nobody's you know, stupid enough to hit on her. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not being intimidating. I Jack. know, but <laughs> Jack doesn't have to be intimidating. 
to be intimidating. No. Well, Especially he actually just... does not look as strong as he is. I mean, you look at him, and it's not like he's got these giant, bulging muscles. He doesn't look like Popeye or anything like that. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. He looks like Spider-Man, not the Hulk. Yeah, but still... Mm. Um, and he's not dressed all in black when he's going to a speakeasy. But he still carries himself like the... Um... He has confidence, that's true. <laughs> a lot of stupid people have confidence until it gets knocked out of them. <laughs> and he doesn't have any reputation stunts. I mean, John Doe, people run <laughs> from him. <laughs> Brendan and I have a nice dinner and then do whatever. So, well, actually, I, I could get you some do. outing stuff, couldn't I? Because my hmm? hat could stink. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, you could. You could take a you could take a reputation stuff. I was gonna take the language thing, but maybe I can get by with this. Speaking as many languages as I do. Well, I'm gonna go to Portugal then. <clears throat> One in more Wakanda. And that line is Bolivia. big man. If you have to pick an area it's that you're a big man in. Is that the first one? Yeah, that's the first one. So you're not generally known as being important. Big name is the one where you start getting known outside of your whatever field. <laughs> but yeah, John Doe has big reputation, so. Okay, yes, your, your night is fine. Nothing exciting happens. Um, uh, you happen to be have gone to the same place that uh, that Betty is at. She is there with Hawk. Yeah. So, Hawk, um, how's the uh, formaldehyde yes. detector you used? Not to? you, oh, him. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are at a speakeasy. <clears throat> he is at a nice. Restaurant. Nice restaurant. <laughs> we weren't sure because all he said is that he was. I was but... indicating the direction. <laughs> yes. So, um, Hawk looks uncomfortable because it's a nice restaurant. Right. <laughs> he is dressed appropriately. In a monkey suit, okay? Well, it's a very nice suit. He is not in a tuxedo. Oh, okay. He has worn a tuxedo before. Mm -hmm. He didn't like it much either. No, that's even worse. Yes. Yeah, some people look fine. I mean, they, they, they wear a suit just fine. Other people, it, they look like that they don't you belong in a suit. <laughs> they just don't, sense. they just do not look comfortable in a suit. And right. that's hot. Yeah. <clears throat> Wouldn't look like a used car salesman. He uh, he he'd look like somebody's bodyguard or similar tough Abs guy wearing absolutely. a suit to blend in. Absolutely, he does. In. He that's what he looks like. He looks like somebody's bodyguard. Um. <laughs> so you're telling me what the pair looks like is mm -hmm. somebody's trophy wife. And the guy's bodyguard mm -hmm. out for dinner. Yes. Yep. Trophy <laughs> <laughs> wife or trophy. Hey, John, no, it's only about 24 or so. Like... I specified what it looks like mm -hmm. to somebody who doesn't know any better. But yes, as opposed to, to Jack, who, who doesn't look especially intimidating, Hawk always seems to look intimidating. Right. Like, <laughs> he 
sometimes he doesn't looks... have intimidation. He's just he just looks like a bodyguard. Right. <laughs> there are reasons I don't take Freddy to nice places. He looks like a bare knuckle boxer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Yeah. Mm. There are worse things they used to do, such oh. as licking the uh, paint brushes used when uh, like making paint. Like Perinium. <laughs> yes. Perinium. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The, the glow in the dark dials on. Yes, yeah, primarily because the people who were doing the painting, nobody ever told them that the paint was dangerous and they shouldn't lick the ends of the brushes. <coughs> to make oh. the point. <coughs> nobody knew. Yeah, it was to start with, at least. Yeah. Why else would they infuse condoms with the stuff? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Although that's less dangerous than deliberately infusing water with the stuff than drinking a lot. I, I guess I can't stuff. argue that. But they but. used to use those on clocks inside of airplanes. They'd be mm -hmm. spun away from your head mm -hmm. the whole time you're flying. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, Which and is... My, my dad had two of those, by the way, that he got from the Air Force. I tested them. Yeah. Gamma rays. Uh -huh, of uh, course. <laughs> it's not alpha particles, it's not beta particles. It's right. It's gamma rays. Mm -hmm. Which you can't shield against with either any reasonable amount of uh, distance or any reasonable amount of transparent substance unless you've got lead glass. Six feet of earth. Yeah. <laughs> That's not that a reasonable amount. Not, not <laughs> not <laughs> see the dial, well, it's buried beneath six feet of earth. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh -huh. So yes, uh, no one is bothering Betty. <laughs> you can talk to her if you want to. Obviously, you're not afraid of Hawk. Right? Nor is Hawk be worried about you or for any of them. No. Yes. We'll say hello, and if she wants to, if she wants to visit, we'll visit. Mm-hmm. Um, she asks you if you've heard from John Doe recently. Not since I got back to New York. Okay. She says she you, that she knows that sometimes you run into him mm -hmm. uh, when she hasn't heard from him. But uh, it's been a few days since she last heard from. Him. So your meal is a good quality meal. Good. Could have been a lot worse. Absolutely. All of the alcohol you get served is of average quality. It's a speakeasy. There's, but that means there's nothing that's, you know, going to cause Paris any problem. Well, I'm sampling all her drinks before she gets to them. Just in case. Okay. <laughs> Um, you don't find any of them, any of them have a problem. There's nothing, I mean, you, you can sniff it and go, no formaldehyde in this one. <laughs> or any other, you know, no wood alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> no. You don't want methanol either. Yeah. <laughs> formaldehyde will seriously mess up your digestion. Methyl alcohol goes on, goes for the nervous system a little more direct. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not good. Um. Anyway, so yeah, there's, there's, it, it's not fancy stuff, but it is not going to poison anybody right. in any way other than alcohol does. Yeah, well, I gotta remember to get a few cases of Tony Sark from Rick. 
That's where you can fly. Um, fly. As in, why are you flying up there yeah. instead of taking your? your well, I suppose it's February. You don't really want to go out on the. Yeah, on the February. Water, right? The weather is miserable. The, the ocean is miserable, and the boat's still getting scraped. That's true. It's only been a couple days. Yeah. Hmm. That's probably the last time you. Went up the um, Canada for some stuff. Eddie tagged along and mm -hmm. talked you into patching back some good gin, uh, which he still has, has a <laughs> bottle stashed stash somewhere in his steamer trunk. Just of the you never know principle. Well, I'd say for a missile person. For a missile person. That's a missile person. Okay, well, anybody else doing anything that evening? You're yeah. translating, you're going out for a nice meal, you're going to a speakeasy, and probably having some food. Hanging around the Century Club, so I need to find just in case. Okay, and are you doing anything? I'm reading the new book. <sighs> By Dorothy Sayers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, uh, it reached the U.S. late 1923. Mm-hmm. But not in paperback, obviously. No. Right, but you know, they're quite uh, quite popular, well written uh, detective thrillers. Okay. And having some drinks from the leftover alcohol that they serve at the Century Club mm -hmm. from yes. down in the cellars. Yes. Oh, hey, That's they've so. got a lot of cellars. You mm know -hmm. <laughs> what they've got stacked down there. That is true. Um, Nobody's really quite sure what they can say <laughs> or who. Um, yeah. Willem probably has a good idea. Hmm. Yeah. I just wonder how well he sleeps at night. <laughs> anyway, when you finish the book, lend it to me. I want to see how quickly I can get to on it. In reality or not? Um, yeah. yeah, Martin has read them already okay. some years ago. Yeah, I'm rereading them. How many are there? Again. About uh, a dozen. About a dozen or so, yeah. Okay. Two collections of, of uh, short pieces, mm -hmm. and the rest are novels. And then someone took up the mantle uh, yeah. in the 2000s. And the first one she did is pretty decent. I suspect there were more, you know, you know, There's note fragmentary list. notes and some sort of outline to that one. Oh, that's one right. That was, a, that was a manuscript she had, uh, an unfinished one. Mm hmm But the one that the new gal wrote on her own, in my opinion, mm -hmm. kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she has him acting out the character, a short version. It's yeah. like, you know, you would want to. Style. Uh, it's like 326 channel stories that I've written in the channel yes. magazine. And most of them were done by Walter Gibson, but Bruce Elliott wrote 40 some of them. And then, and then in the 60s, Walter Gibson wrote a few more. He did Spy for Super Pod, which is the shadow of so the Super Spy. Strange. You can get it as a t shirt if you want. I don't know if I do want. He asked me about the cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess the next day, what's so exciting going to happen? Yeah, nothing exciting happens that evening. Um, so somebody comes to wake you. Yeah, so it's the uh, it will be the sixteenth of February, nineteen twenty-four. Yeah. Um, and at Saturday. Yeah, right. it's a Saturday. At about 6 a.m., 
somebody comes to wake you up and says um, the indicator has changed. Okay. I will be right there. Okay. Put, put down the, the some fluffy slippers in the robe. <laughs> Check how fast it's moving. Uh, mail truck speed. Okay. You probably should follow it because I only have a limited range on this. All right. Um, so it goes to um, the train station that's not in New York. That, that's the, out there. That, 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 yeah, it goes to the New Jersey train station. Okay. That that uh, actually allows um, like steam trains. Yep. Yeah, something so, like that. So basically, it stops at the train with some minor movements. Yeah, it it, it goes there and and sort of sits for a couple of hours. Well, before the sits for a couple hours, check the train schedules. If I've got time, I go back. You can go to back change. to sleep. Yes. <laughs> well, six a.m. is only a few hours early. For me. Yeah. Um. But a few, like one. <laughs> yeah. So yes, you can go back to sleep, and at eight a.m., yeah. uh, it, it moves onto a train and starts heading west. Okay. Okay. Well, I will. Jack might be awake. I'll, I'll send a message in case any of them are awake. Jack is not awake. <laughs> I I said might. Uh, he he tends to go to bed uh, at like four in the morning. Might, yeah, but he might have stayed off late. Uh, what, what time is it right now? Eight-ish? Eight-ish. Eight -ish. Eight -ish. Let's find out. Yeah, it's not good. Nah, Andy is not getting yeah. it. Was not getting up early, although... Yeah, your your spirit companion is not waking you up at 6 a.m. when it moves. <laughs> I'm getting up a little bit early, but not that early. Or at 8 a.m. when it moves again. Like... <laughs> he'll, he'll wait until 10 and visit you and say, it's on a train. Um, headed west. Well, from what I what I would guess he he might do is keep checking back periodically and report as soon as he catches me awake, mm -hmm. which would be yeah somewhere nine thirty ten ish. Yeah, he's he's yeah. going to he he'll check, but he's not he's not waking you up is what right. I'm saying. So right. it, he checks at eight because I'm, that's when I'm it got on the train. Asleep. And you're at still nine, asleep. I'm still asleep, although not as. And yeah, as he healthy. checks at nine, so he comes back at ten. Mm -hmm. Okay. And lets you know it's on a he train headed west right now. Was Annie able to figure out, based on when the train left, and which specific track it's taking out of town, where it's headed? I don't know that I have that sort of record from. I mean, it's headed west. Yeah. <laughs> I, I probably it have maps very that include it headed east. I, yeah, well, it, it's starting in New Jersey, so it could go a little east. But yeah, yeah, yeah it it's all west. The way out long it's not going north and it's not going south. Yeah. it's so going west. Okay. I probably have some maps that indicate major rail uh, Absolute. things. So what I can do is. Uh, get to the point where I'm sure which oh. line it seems to be taking. Okay. Well, the ones that would be there are a lot. There are a lot, yep. which yeah. means I'm probably going now about 50, 60 miles outside of the city before I've got it uh, narrowed down to which one it's on. Yeah. And you get Central, you get through Pennsylvania, you get through PO. I you might have Lehigh Valley. As soon as yeah, I get the just report keep from my and then you my get, you get the question of, is it on the Erie Express or is not it local? You know, yeah. not sending it as an emergency mm. signal, but uh -huh. but you know, I uh, I, yeah, I have sure. I have it reported as as on, the on the train heading west. The, right? the, the, yeah. the only so. real question I have is, will the airship have any trouble keeping up with the train? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, it's, not, it's modern Japanese poetry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, not e it's not even the fastest passenger train anywhere in, in the U.S. this, this year, uh, no. probably. It it's, has passenger cars, mm -hmm. but it also has... Cargo, including names. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
And this is the era of steam, so there's definitely a limitation on mm -hmm. that. Yep. This is not diesel electric. Yes. Stopping to take on water about every four hours. Mm -hmm. Which means you have to come mm -hmm. to a complete stop. Unfortunately, to do it. Yes. and fortunately, there's a telegraph mm -hmm. office about every train stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, yeah, we will follow it, and it may be that we have to follow it all the way to through a couple of train stops. But. Um, Meanwhile, those of us who weren't uh, weren't in these F ones, had we uh, worked, had we worked out a plan for this not terribly unlikely contingency? Uh, not that I'm aware of. No, we haven't. And any, when was your first message? Your uh, first radio call? It would have been about six and another about eight. Okay. And. One, as I figure I'm leaving the range where they can directly receive it. Mm -hmm. um, and at the first train stop, I will call a uh, radio telephone junction to make a call to the Century Club, because by then they'll be awake. Yes, it's... Um, I'm, it, when I get the first message... Yeah. All right, I have breakfast first. And <laughs> I was up at six. Okay. It says right here. Sure. Um, okay. So I'll have breakfast, and I will write a note addressed to Edgy, Jack, and Simon uh, that I'm headed out to the airport to pre-flight the the plane. Very, the airline. Good. Very good. Very good. Thank you. So as you know, as soon as <coughs> Uh, you know, I I will in my my message just say I have a report that it's on, and and the thing is, our radio watches are just radios. They don't store messages. They that do we not. They do not. So I don't, I I don't know about the ones Annie sent earlier, but I will start getting up very promptly and check for messages at the desk before I get breakfast. Um, yeah, and as soon as I as soon as I see uh, uh, as soon as I see Rex no, say to myself, I'm glad somebody's thinking and try so, Simon again. So I also realize that you're pre-flighting with Goliath or not? Um, I'll send back a message okay. to you that I'm going to. Okay. I'll continue um, following and keep you. What time are you calling me? Um, it would be. Probably just a few minutes after ten. Um, let's see, it's the sixteenth. It's Saturday. About an hour after it starts moving, you figure out it's going onto the Pennsylvania Rail Railroad. Okay. Um, okay. Where did I write? Thomas apparently answered the phone. Ah. Okay. Adam's still out of town. Right. <laughs> I um, yes, I tried tried the so I tried the watch first, got got no answer. Right. I tried calling. Okay, so Th Thomas, uh, <clears throat> uh, Thomas is the butler. Yes, I I will say, uh, I will just tell him, tell Simon as as soon as he's awake, our package is moving. Rick is getting the plane ready. He'll, he'll figure it out. Okay. Well, I will let him know as soon as he informs us he's awake. <laughs> oh, that was a big railroad. Yeah. Oh, it's the most, it's the, line, it's the most popular railroad of all the railroads in the United States. Is Pennsylvania. And I will start throwing together a little Second overnight bag. <laughs> Hmm? What? Monopoly, Redding. I think the first one you hit is the B.O. No, 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 the Redding. Redding. That's right. It's the Redding. Pennsylvania. And then the Pennsylvania. Then, then the B.O. The then the Short Line. Then the Short Line. Now, a Short Line is a type of railroad. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. lives up to its name. It only runs really short distance. Yeah. Like the Sioux Line. It went from, I think, Duluth to Chicago. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, 
blues, Queen Cities, maybe like lacrosse, and all the type. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Very, very limited. Mm-hmm. Um, Thomas did think to uh, start packing. Start packing for me. Okay. <laughs> when when he heard good that idea, he was getting the plane ready. Yes, he could he could draw that mm-hmm. inference. Okay, yes. good for him. He has leadership. <laughs> Is the is the air airfield where the Goliath lives within uh, our block radio's no. range of the century? No, it is absolutely not. So I would. It's up on Long Island. That. Okay, sure. Uh, it's Roosevelt Airfield, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, no point placing a, a phone call and and get you know calling so at the point away that from I've narrowed down moving. what uh, line it is. Would I still be within radio range from the airship? To the Goliath. From the airship to the Goliath, yes. Okay. I will give <coughs> Rick the update mm-hmm. if he's um, in the plane. Okay. Okay, I respond. <clears throat> right. Oh, he's good. Locked. It's on Long Island, Island, so I can swing by the mystery and pick up George and Freddy and then head out there. Yes. And, uh, hello. None of the rest of us know this yet. We can use the, the mystery as a rendezvous point, so we only have to make one stop. I think what he was actually saying is that he's picking up his pe- people at like mm-hmm. 7 a.m. Uh, on know, his okay. way to the, to the airport. airport. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Did not parse that out. I, I believe that's what he was yes. How was the plane going to land there? How was the plane going to land where? Back to the mystery. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Oh, no, 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 we're not. Okay. Yeah. We're not doing that. Okay. I am not landing on. No. You can. Landing, You've got I floats on, on the plane. The plane. <laughs> yeah, okay. But that part of that part of the harbor area wouldn't be the easiest it's, thing. No, in the you, world. it's it's very congested in that area. You, you wouldn't. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's possible. You'd have to make a a, a pilot. Well, no. Actually, what he'd probably do would be land out there. And have mm. the mystery come to him. Either have the mystery come to him or taxi in. Way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, either way. The, 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 the problem the is the mystery is currently in dried up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. That yes. is true. So it's... that would that, that would that that would eliminate the easiest solution anyway. So I am I am at the Century Club uh, Next. doing doing some packing, taking a break for breakfast and finishing my pack. When did the Carnegie uh, Library start being built? The public library? The 80s? The 1880s? Yeah, I think so. I think or 90s. So. Okay. In the very late 19s. Some late to that's very late. Cool. At the next point where the train cool. stops, are you doing? it's convenient to all, yeah. uh, connect to the phone that's system and on. call the nearest library. 1883. Oh, yeah. First started being built. Great. There's public libraries. Then. There <laughs> are. 1883 to 1929. There were 2,509 libraries were built. So most of them have been built by 1924. Okay. Get a reference librarian and ask them. Uh, International mail to uh, Australia. What are the main shipping points? Uh, the main shipping point is San Francisco. Okay. San Francisco's dash dog. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I actually rolled a superb uh, academics Check. roll. <laughs> you mean it wasn't a minus three? It was a plus four. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then I guess I owe John and Joe an apology because you're one good roll and I just got you to listen. <laughs> well, I've actually been rolling really well tonight. I don't okay. know why. To make up for those other nights. Yeah, the many nights where I just rolled terrible. Um, 
the gods of war <laughs> finally stab just as a funny anymore. Let's give him a break. Yes. We'll give him one good night so that he has some hope. So that we can destroy that hope. <laughs> With many nights of bad rolling. Yeah. It's just like the bus driver, you know. The old lady's running after the bus. The bus driver stops. Waits till she almost gets to the door. Then he guns it. That's me. Um, I will grant that divine sense of humor is sometimes at about that level, seemingly. So, if you're down to, in downtown Minneapolis, you can actually catch a bus if you run fast enough down, um, well, Nicollet? Nicollet Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Nicollet Mall there. Mm -hmm. But uh, because there's enough, it, it has to stop so often and let so many people on and off, you can actually. I, it took me three blocks, but I did catch up to the bus and was able to get on it once. <laughs> they tell you not to do that. You're not supposed to run after the bus, but in downtown Minneapolis, the buses are slow enough. That it can be done. That it can be done. Or you have fast as a leopard, you just didn't know it. Yeah, I do not. <laughs> I do not have, oh my goodness. Well, that was a terrible roll. Um... <laughs> So the reference librarian is not going to, uh, yeah, give you an extra piece of information. Okay. Well, I was happy to thank them, whether they be male or female, for mm -hmm. a good time and hang up. And we continue to track. Now, some of us, some of us continue to sleep. <laughs> yes. Jack continues to sleep. He's not getting up to 11. So it's Simon's waking up. <laughs> ah, a little late. Yes, they were Simon, but uh, not terribly late. Jake's been awake since four in the morning, though. I mean, he went to bed at four in the morning. See. Yeah. <laughs> it was the what? Uh, the Pits no. Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania one. one. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, well, we'd be on a steamer now, so we wouldn't be on a GG one. And by, by now, as he is likely uh, uh, sitting uh, sitting in the uh, uh, common area reading rooms, mm -hmm. no, the reading rooms are up by the by the libraries, but the, the common area where there's newspapers, closest comfortable chair to the front desk, with a, a pack bag sitting on the floor next to him and his last cup of coffee, waiting to hear from anybody else. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. I hope you have several newspapers. Oh yeah. It's the Century Club. It's the There's Century Club. How many newspapers. did they get every morning? Lots of those magazines. Mm -hmm. Well, they get all of the New York newspapers. Mm -hmm. um, which is several international editions. What? Mm -hmm. Which is saying a lot at this yes. time. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of New York City newspapers. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I was amazed at Schindler's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, where would they have all these newspapers from all over the country? Mm -hmm. This blew my mind that mm -hmm. you know, I mean, San Francisco paper, New York City paper. Yeah. And it's just like, that was one of their specialties. The downtown one? Yeah. 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 Well, they, 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 they started out as a newsstand. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So it is uh, it's continuing to head west. Okay. That's when's the weekend for Chicago or is it the city? Um can we tell right away? <laughs> <laughs> well I would you would have to you would have to know the mail routes mm, to right. know. And just by and tracking it along the rail lines, you wouldn't know which until it was near Chicago, even if it was going to Kansas City, it wouldn't pass um, much south of Chicago. Actually, I'm it would. Sure. Oh, yeah. It would, yeah. So it would be Once you hit Pittsburgh, it has to okay. make a decision. Okay. But it's not Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Western Pennsylvania. Yeah, is Western. It, yeah. yeah. Yep. Is when it makes the decision. But that's so obviously that quite a ways yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Pennsylvania is pretty wide. <laughs> yes. yes, that. 
Is it very like Philly's on the east side and Pittsburgh's on Pittsburgh the west side? Pittsburgh is on the west. But that's that's where it would make the decision. Uh, well, it's not it's not actually Kansas City is on the on the Pennsylvania line. It goes to St. Louis or Chicago. Oh, okay. okay. So looking ahead, about when would it get to that juncture, given what I've seen of its travel rate and stuff? Are we talking middle of the night sort of thing? Um, let's see. For some reason, the discussion in Pennsylvania wants to link the, the prize for the tenth of work. Um, I do not know that. Loser gets Cincinnati. <laughs> um, so it should hit Pittsburgh about supper time. Okay. So does somebody get that on Duke of Cincinnati to their list of titles temporarily or something? Um, probably more like has to. Actually, there probably is a Duke of Cincinnati. The question is, who does he report to this year? Ah. Well, whether it's a Duke or whatever, but yeah. They are on something. Mm -hmm. I don't keep track of the SCA ranks. Yes. Uh, we will let it be appropriate for each year. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, so yes, about supper time. Okay. Well, overnight we won't be able to track it because, well, I've only got one pilot. And he has to sleep. And he has to sleep. <laughs> yes, I'm acknowledging that. Yeah. So do I. <laughs> yeah. But he needs more sleep. <laughs> Strictly well, speaking, you, I do. You can push it because you have a much higher. But I can't speed. drive the airship. Well, yeah. You can. You just. <laughs> You just, just you don't just do through well. a lot of fate points with a, a base piloting. Well, you a, have a lot of fate yeah. so John Doe know. piloted an airship, but he used disguise of the mind to do it. <laughs> I don't have we just That's... wait until we catch up with you. Yeah, and then Daniel you know on. we can st we, we 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 can you can do something to hang on to the Goliath, and then and then mm -hmm. these two can drive pilot. <laughs> That'll work, but okay. You can land on the air, airship, that's it. Yep, she's got the top of <laughs> no, that there, super structure. No, that don't that. no, there's not a landing strip on the airship. <laughs> you don't need it. You're both flying. It's together. No. <laughs> no, you need at least a little, I mean, you can't hey, just they, dead stop they the plane. You a plane in the air. It's the same deal. In any case... We may be able to and transit, they it, and they do it at high speed. Okay, what I am speed acknowledging that it is. A, a couple of choices. Uh huh. Uh, you you jump over through the air. <laughs> I'm liking this. You, you, this is really pulpy. Wing walking, man. <laughs> Wing walking. <laughs> what do you think um, they're doing here? Huh? Exactly. If you, um, but as I was going to say, either how portable is the monitoring? It is the airship. It is the it's airship. Built the it's airship. built, built into, into the airship. electronics of the airship. So oh, the, yeah. the, the electronics, the, then, the airship is a communication center. Yeah, then, that's part of what is. Then the, George or I come to the airship and take over for your pilot. Okay. And then the remainder, whether it is I or George, uh, we'll transport, you know, we'll fly the plane. Or we all can, or everybody continues on the airship. Yeah. I'd say everybody goes on the airship. Because yeah. if you leave the airplane, you leave George behind, he's only one pilot. Mm -hmm. He has no fate points. Right. Which means he's going to get tired and he's going to have to mm -hmm. land anyways. Yes, obviously. <clears throat> but if he did a U-turn and went back to New York City, he'd be fine. Mm -hmm. True enough. Yeah. And while sticking together for a long period of 
of time might be tricky holding uh holding the the back speed of of the airship long enough for us to all cross on a rope ladder or something would oh be that feasible. should be trivial yeah <laughs> and it's very bulky. oops for the proper the only one who's gonna have a problem with it is I suppose I could climb the rope, I grab have, him, and carry her and take him down. I have athletics at Bayer. That's why you're going to have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you're the one who would have a problem. I have, yes. no, I have to roll above if, a wash. If we That's all get our tuchuses in gear, we can could catch up to the, the airship, to the airship at in Pens- to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah. And, and not have to do those well, gymnastics. Well, yes. Oh, we can I, arrange, I we, we can, I mean, the train has to stop every, it you can always, every four hours, right? so we so, can just yeah. arrange for, to, to switch and, when the train is both stopped. land and, and transfer whatever personnel and equipment need to be transferred while the train stops, yes. Um, I'll have mm-hmm. the guest rooms prepared then. You're going to have to do the Pittsburgh transfer then? I'm suspecting. Uh, I'm assuming that joke. nothing. Manhattan transfer. Oh, yes. yeah, well. Assuming mm-hmm. that nothing yeah, uh, so changes. <clears throat> oh, well. If necessary, we rely on the show. Chicago Transit Authority. However. Which is what they wanted to call it. No, that's a different. I, I Chicago really like one. the idea of swinging down on the yes, road. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> that is supported. I mean, uh, I'll have hatches on the yeah. top of them. It works for me. There. There's no problem from my point of view. Wait, see, this is before your two time, but we once took the plane swung down, and Jack had to grab a sill from the desert in the empty quarter, or something like that. I mm-hmm. He's on the end of a rope and he had to grab him, mm-hmm. grab him, and then grab the rope. <laughs> plane flew away. <sighs> You're being a silly boy. It's right on Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which is a very pulpy movie. Yep. Mm-hmm. It is that. And somebody asked me, well, can you give me an example of a movie that's pulpy? And he said, well, the first Indiana Jones. Okay, okay, I see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The second one is equally pulpy. It's just, it's not, just not good. 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 <laughs> well, that's because Nazis make such good films. Yeah, there's that. truth. And so they fixed it the third one. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't have... watch the fourth one. No, I haven't watched it, and I don't. I, maybe a gun point I would. But... <laughs> there was a fourth one? Yes. Yeah, there was a fourth one. Done like in the last five years. Yes. Oh. Not well, as good as most of them. Is that the one really? where he hides in a refrigerator? Yes, yes. that's the one where he hides in a refrigerator. Yeah. Yes. Right. That's it's the one. Yes. Not as good as, as the first and third in ways very different than how the second isn't as good as the first and third. Yes. Yes. The only reason the second one, in my opinion, isn't as good is because this doesn't have Nazis as well. Eh, that wasn't its only problem. It's I didn't like case. the hero. It was, it was, it was, a, it was like a movie. movie. Movie that was an amusement ride, like yes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yes. I, 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 in in many ways, I think the second one may actually be more pulpy than the first one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So, uh, yes, continuing to head west, mm-hmm. continuing to head west. We're going to be catching up in the plane at some point. When, yeah, when well, people get to that'll the plane, depend on when the we plane take takes off. off. That depends when the plane takes so off. The last I heard, we hadn't hit 11 a.m. yet. Okay, so well, there were two people that weren't away. Nothing oh, exciting is going to happen before 11 a.m. <laughs> yeah. so, it's 11 a.m. I wake up and get this message. I look at him and go, am I packed? <laughs> Both and steamer he- trunks? And, and he, he said yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. I'll want a quick brunch. And I will get dressed. And before I have brunch, before I eat, I will call the Century Club and ask for Edgy. And of course, that's one of the things I one of the things I was waiting for right there. So hello? Edgy. I hear we're um going for a plane ride. We are, we are indeed. I presume Rick is all done with 
free flight and fueling and is sort of twiddling his thumbs waiting to hear from us by mm -hmm. now. That's a good description. <laughs> well, I assume That's you want to ride? Me. Yes, please. Um, have we heard anything from... Has, has Jack made an appearance? Not yet. No appearance, no communication. Hopefully real soon. Okay. Kind of figuring that <coughs> Jack is even better at hitting the ground running than Simon <laughs> is. Simon just hit the ground first, as it were. Mm -hmm. Well, Simon has more staff. <laughs> Simon's staff hit the ground running. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh yes. The other thing was when 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 Dryden told me that it gave me this message, I said. Oh, um, tell James he's going along this time. <laughs> so tell him to get packed. <laughs> okay. And somebody help him if need be. <laughs> well, let me know when it's 11.15. Probably not. Hmm? Let me know when it's 11.15. Okay, it's 11.15. That's probably... Conversations have happened, and now it's 11.15. So probably about five minutes after I call. <laughs> so, I'm calling your sister. So. I guess I got up, and I shaved. Say, I better check in to see if anything happened. And uh, so, yes, uh, is Eddie there? Yeah, of course. Yes. Sir John, Fra I mean, not Sir John Francis Never Edgerton. Been knighted. Yeah. Never been knighted, at least not yet. What <laughs> happened? Um, so, yes, Sir Page, telephone. Hold up. This is Jack. Anything happen last night? Yes, our uh, our item is on the move on a train heading west. Um, Annie is already following, and Rick's getting the plane ready. Okay. Um. Well, I'll uh, eat, have some coffee, and Danish or something, and I'll get to the Century Club, grab my travel bag, and um, I should be ready by eleven thirty. Okay, excellent. See you soon. That doesn't sound like it's giving much time to get to, uh, for moving between A and B. And C. I have a way of doing that. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> yep. uh, Paris, uh, I have to go out of town. <laughs> How long? I don't know. Why do you always say that? <laughs> because he doesn't you know when, know, when normal people go on business trips, they know how long they're going to be gone. This isn't exactly a business trip. I know. Well, I'm following something. My father always knew how long he was going to be gone. He always knew. <laughs> well, we're tracking an He's item. reliable. <laughs> We're tracking an item that's technically addressed to out of the country, so it could be a ways, a while. How far out of the country? Is it going to Toronto, or <coughs> is it going to the moon? I guess that's worst a possibility. Case, worst case, it'd be Australia. The moon doesn't have a surface. <laughs> yes, well, but she's been there, so... I know. <laughs> So you might be going to Australia. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you do realize that's about as far away from me as you could possibly go, right? <laughs> it is the South Pole, but... South Pole, South Pole is actually closer. Closer. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't do the spherical triangles in my head well enough to be totally sure, but... I would... Well, the thing is, I think uh, we did yeah. the check, and Alice Springs and New York are really close to, like, this on the globe. Mm -hmm. Antipodal, yes. As close to antipodal as you can get with both points on land. Yes. <laughs> and assuming we take the great circle route as opposed to boring through the planet... <laughs> Well, because the planet the... is extremely slow. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we don't have the equipment handy to bore through the planet. Yeah, and I have this time. Machine. 
<laughs> well, where are you keeping it? No, uh, no, no. Baxter has a mole machine. Yeah, that's that's what I was from him. Yeah. Yes. Which would and require finding him. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know. All I know is his facility isn't locked because I just walk right in. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, but it goes three miles an hour through the crust of the earth. You don't want to go to Alice Springs at a rate of three miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. I have ships only going like 15. Even, even ignoring any difficulties passing through the lower mantle and the core, I can figure that 100 miles per hour on high <laughs> times A distance is a lot better than 2 miles per hour per A. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's, um, well, I'm... Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to. So, do you want to make an empathy roll, or do you think you got it? <laughs> I got so, use rapport roll to try to smooth this over, right? Yes. Well, that's pretty good. Want a pet kangaroo? All right. She's old mollified. She's fine, I guess. That she's. Listen, we're going to after the guy who was spying on you and me and all of us. Okay. So if we're successful, he won't be spying on us anymore. Okay. That's a good thing. Spying usually leads to something worse. Yes, it will lead to something worse. It will lead that they'll try to kill me and Simon and Edgy, and he might miss and hit Cornelia or you. You wouldn't let that happen, would you? Um, I would Exactly. I, I, would, I, I, would, <laughs> I would try not to. I would do my best to keep you. So yeah, yeah. while he's talking to Paris, while he's talking to Paris. Yes. Are you gonna actually talk I'm to going Cornelia? To call Cornelia. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm doing this in person. Yeah. Can I tag that? <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna do it on phone. That's gonna I know, worse. it's going to be an environmental Aspect of doing it on the phone, yes. Could be a minus one or two. So you're calling Cornelia. I'm calling Cornelia. There are definitely answers to not. So, um, yes, one of her servants answers. Yes. Hi, Simon. Is Cornelia available? Yes, she is. Let me get her for you. Thank you. It'll only be a second. He doesn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> You so hear, in, in fact, you hear, you know, a few seconds later, you hear a very faintly a voice, and then another feminine voice, and then nothing. He just didn't shoot himself in the foot. He used my anti pink gun to shoot himself in the foot. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm actually better off because I would have been worse off if I hadn't called her. Yeah. yeah. Especially. And the anti tank gun would have been not calling. Especially yeah. with the whole so, coming up. Mm -hmm. Even well, though it, it, from now. you're pretty sure she was just like in the next room. It takes a full minute before she answers the phone. <laughs> I'm not I'm at all. I'm surprised she didn't go for a walk. Yeah. Simon! Hello, Cornelia. Hello, Simon. How are you? I just got bad news. Who died? Um, well, it's not quite bad. that bad. Okay. But... The trail to the guy that we think is investigating us to um, probably try and kill us. And I really us? Hate and I really us? Hate you mean you and I? No, I mean me and Edgy and, and Jack. But it would okay. be a shame for you to get caught in, the, caught, caught in the overflow. I think the word is crossfire. Uh, well, it depends <laughs> on what they use. Bombs <laughs> are up. Uh, Okay. Bombs would be one of the so there's players. there's somebody who's apparently a threat. Yep. And the trail 
is currently headed west and is somewhere in the middle of Pennsylvania and heading further west. And I need to chase after it. Okay, the trail is heading west. Yes. It's addressed, to, show? <laughs> it's addressed to Alice Springs. It's addressed. So it's like a package. Yeah, a letter, actually. A letter. A letter is heading west uh -huh. to some place called Alice Springs that Alice I've never Springs, heard of. Alice Springs, Australia. Actually, it's not called that in 1924. No. <laughs> it's, it's got a different name in 1924. Right, which we already part, part part which we've already forgotten. Let's, let's, but let's just call it Alice Springs, Springs from now on. Okay, so it's it's headed to Alice Springs. I have never heard of Alice Springs. I have no idea where that is. I was. Having I did to say Alice Springs, Springs Australia. Australia. Oh, you did say Australia. He appended that. Yes. Yes. Um, when she said I, the first time she said I don't know okay. where it is, I said Alice All Springs, right. Australia. Australia. Yes. Um. Well, I know where Australia is. It is very, very, very far away. It's about as far away as it's possible to get, yes. Okay. Well, stay on the track, yes. So you might be going very, very, very far away, is what you're saying. Yes. But I have almost completed my If you my don't reminder. get back here by June, do you know what is going to happen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just want to be sure... I anticipate. So, how long will you be gone? I anticipate worst case four to six weeks. Best case. That's a week the and worst and a half. case. Yes, four best case weeks, a week, a week four and a half. to six weeks. She she heard it. What was the best case I did? A week, a week and a half. <laughs> You're sure? You're going to be back. No later than the end of March. Yeah. I will arrange to be back no later than the end of March. <laughs> now, <laughs> you'll keep me updated, though. Yes. You won't go weeks at a time without <clears throat> keeping me updated. No, I have the, um, I have the reminder almost complete. Okay. <laughs> I'll be finishing it up later today. Okay. Fine. I'd forgotten about that. Are you making something? Some sort of it? alarm clock or something, I suppose. <laughs> Roughly. Uh, <laughs> it goes off and says, call your fiance. <laughs> <laughs> something to that effect, yes. Yes. Okay. I'm, so, I'm, I'm adding an additional you'll... enchantment on W. Where's Cornelia Ray? Right. Ah. So, you'll be back by the end of March at the worst. Yep. And you'll keep me updated in the meanwhile. Yes. I'll make a report. I assume you have whatever ring is necessary. For yes. That. Um, <laughs> you must have put it on phone? before yes. you made this cool. phone call. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that would be superb. Okay. Uh, fine. That's fine. As long as you're back by the end of March. Everything is fine, and you have to keep me up. Yep. Fine. <laughs> Jack started with the... Uh, no, Simon started with the... Um, we're trying to keep this guy from killing people, including mm -hmm. you and me. Yeah. Which is a compelling argument, <laughs> or at least potentially more compelling than... <laughs> uh -huh. um, and, and no, so, I mean, Jack's discussion eventually went yes. well. <laughs> and, 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 and it took Simon, a couple of detours on the way there. <laughs> Simon had made it back nice for the uh, holiday parties. Absolutely. So, I mean, it, his track record is good. Well, no, his track record is fair. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. His so the track. last time he was gone, he was gone for longer than he said he was going to be and did not yeah, make any contact at all the whole yes. time. <laughs> yes. This is why his track record is high. fair. Uh, okay. In we were in uh, Europe. Oh, right. We were making a short trip to Moscow. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, so things got <laughs> complicated. Right. So, um, 
Yes. Fine. Already. That last prophet will be the Lord of the Lord. <laughs> well, I'll be talking to you soon then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> says goodbye and hangs up. And that, that conversation probably took as long as, as any of Simon's preparations. So at about 11.30, Jack walks down to the uh, kind of common room of the bars and saying, well, I'm ready. Yeah. And, and, and he does from, from you know, somewhere in the whatever, whatever lounge, whatever the room by by the front desk with the newspapers and all. Well, yeah, well, over, well, over well. here. Uh, Simon, if it's right about 11.30, uh, Simon should be here any minute from what he told me. Apropos of absolutely nothing, Rick sends Freddy off with, like, Three dollars to go buy stationery and envelopes. Okay. <laughs> More than enough, but yeah. I can yeah, I mean, you're see. getting some very nice stationery. I, I, I figure can... there's some people who may have to do some communicating. <laughs> <laughs> and it better be decent quality communication. Yeah. Uh, I suppose that's true. He doesn't know why, but... Oh, the... yes, I noticed that. <laughs> Just has a hunch, maybe. <laughs> just something in the air says. Mm -hmm. uh, and besides, it's not. It, I don't have it in my supplies. Ah, okay. I can actually think of several contingencies where that would be useful for things other than keeping Simon and Jack out of the doghouse. Origami. Yep. Although True. origami paper would be first for Freddy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that so. matter, paper airplanes. The possibilities of throwing paper airplanes from an airship. You know, you could get some pretty good distance if you start <laughs> off high enough. And I don't have, any, I have anything me. as a weapon, so. Mm -hmm. Deadly, don't too. Me. Oh, good right. deadly paper airplanes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. In this game, it have. have I, I made the example before of using a, a stale loaf of French bread as a weapon <laughs> and killing somebody with it. Hey, I used a playing card and he killed all kinds of people. Yeah. yeah. In the comics. And there, there's a guy who's who's on some program, um, Discovery Channel or something like that, who was using playing cards for... Wonderful things like slicing apples at a distance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dartboard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Regular playing cards. Mm -hmm. Bicycles. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, they, they, they can be used as weapons. And, and yeah. Memo to sell. Bring a deck of cards. <laughs> Got one in my pack. <laughs> Is that too long? TSA will start confiscating mm -hmm. cards. <clears throat> so, um, everybody shows up and heads to the plane, I assume. Mm -hmm. Not uh, uh, just yes. to the plane. Yes. <laughs> so, so when you when you went went to the airport, you picked up the crew from from the mystery on mm -hmm. your way there. Well, so I picked up. Freddy and oh, George. Freddy and George. Okay. Yes. Part of the crew. Yeah, but you have yeah. people behind you that keep an eye on the yeah. yeah. boat. Sure. And, and they're useless away from the boat. So. Well, I shouldn't say useless. They are totally mediocre away yeah. from the boat. That's just the other way saying Well, actually, they're average. Okay, it's almost yeah. useless. All, almost, almost useless. Almost, you know, they're pretty, pretty primary close skills, to generic are... NPCs. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Who is... Wait, let's see. Who is at the boat then still? That's Philippe okay. and Lynn. All right. Okay. Okay, so we uh, got from the Century Club to the airport as fast as uh, 
Yeah, that's as Simon can safely manage unless he brought along a driver to take the car back, which would make a certain amount of sense. Unfortunately, the driver is currently in route from oh, right. London to New York. Right. And we'll probably get uh, and we'll probably get here on um, like uh, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Oh well, <laughs> he left London on the tenth. He left London about the tenth. For you. What do you want? Do you want to be up there where that girl is? <sighs> okay. Um. Actually, what I'm going to do is find somebody at the airport. Uh, I'm going to assume that I can find somebody at the airport that I can hire to get the car back from the brownstone. Sure. Um, somebody just hanging out at the airport. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and, you know, yeah. uh, I'll offer them, you know, this much plus a bonus if it gets back to the brownstone without, you know, without any damage or difficulty. Well, actually, what I'll probably do is I'll talk to Rick. Ah, uh, yeah. And get him to recommend a, 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 get him to recommend a reliable person that would like a ride into town. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. <clears throat> Rick's contacting is better than some of us, and he's known and thus knows people around yes. that airport. It's a fair role. Yes. Hmm? A, fair contact- a fair contacting role for ah, a person no. like this. Person- oh, it's no. easier than that? Yeah. Good, um, right? Hmm? Good? No. No. This network I just said, Oh, yeah. Go talk to the guy at the, at, at the uh, desk in there where you file the flight plans. He's got an assistant who can do the job. Okay. Invoking yep. your network of contacts. Yes. <laughs> totally negating the need to make a contacting role. <laughs> yes. Now I'm going to have to define two more people. <laughs> oh, well. It's kind isn't, of fun. Isn't that just the most terrible thing to have to do? <laughs> Let's see if I can remember. Sort of whistle, you know, whistle off peaceful and peaceful at a at very short notice. Oh. Mm-hmm. What's really nice is I can make both the guy at the at the desk and his assistant. I can give them three uh, advances. One of which is independent. One, one of which is independent. Yeah, if you need more information on contacting, I did put a contact in the section of that basic text. Mm-hmm. And I have to put that up. I put well, everything in the book about contacting at one place. Mm-hmm. That makes it too easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe Kirk must roll leadership here too deal with any sort of bureaucratic entanglement. But this not the fair one you won't contact me instead. Instead. The insider. Um. He's able to navigate bureaucratic bureaucracies easily, not because he understands them, but because he knows people embedded in the bureaucracy who can provide shortcuts. Yeah. So we are taking like off. Yes. Okay. Contact. <laughs> Somebody needs needle. to make some piloting rolls. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you get a companion, right? Bonus. Thing? And I have a companion bonus in there. Uh, let's see. So that's fair. That's a good, a good takeoff. Wow, that's just more than we needed, but okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fine, hopefully. Yeah. Weather's decent. Absolutely. A little windy, but. Uh, Again, Heck a day. Is a it is a good. Yes, it'd be one of the few circumstances where a, a wind out of the east would be uh, <laughs> not exactly good news, but have enough of a silver lining for us that we wouldn't mind. 
um, you're heading into the winter. It's oh, not, right. it's not a, oh, you know, right. yeah, you, you want to take off going east well, and then do you turn up in the sky? <laughs> yeah, but you know, most airfields are set off, set off, so you have some choice as to which direction you're mm-hmm. taking off depending on the wind. Yeah. All so, right, so I you're in the air, on. you're flying. Mm-hmm. And it's about 120 miles an hour. And how fast is the train going? And the train seems to be going about 30. Okay. 40, something like that. And makes stops. Mm-hmm. And makes stops every four hours. So probably. I mean, they're not, not they're not like huge long stops. It no. doesn't take an enormous amount of time. So probably closer to 30 to 40 on the average. Probably, yeah. Um, so we're, we're gaining on it fairly fast. I'm not mm-hmm. sure how so far it has west it's got. Three to four, three so it left at, at eight. It eight. left at eight. And it's currently off, right? noon. Yeah. Um, so it's 120 miles ahead of us. Mm-hmm. And we're closing <laughs> the gap at 120 miles an hour. Yeah. And 90, oh, miles, well, an 90 hour. miles an hour because, yeah. yeah. 85 to 90. Yeah. Okay. Your Fine. your main yeah. problem is wanting to land ahead of it. Yeah. And so get um, notification if it goes someplace other than expected. So so at one o'clock we're going to be thirty miles shy of it. Mm-hmm. So at two o'clock we can be comfortably ahead of it. Right. <laughs> and and land at the next land at the the next place near the rail line that has a decent airfield of yeah. some sort, which um. Probably about, well, probably about one o'clock, we should try calling Annie on the radio and say, hey, Annie, um, are we where are you? <laughs> yes, the best uh, mm-hmm. bet for landing is Pittsburgh, because that's where it has to, where it will make a decision. I mean, okay. it's not making right. a decision. It knows where it's going. Right. right. <laughs> they know where we they're going. We'll find so out whether it's heading right for Chicago robbery. or heading for St. Louis. <laughs> yeah. So, Pittsburgh. Yeah. So how far away is Pittsburgh? Uh, from New York, yes, yeah. to be about three hundred miles. So it'll take us not quite three hours, right? And about one o'clock, we'll re- we'll radio Annie and say, um, should hi, we, we should be within more, radio range right ahead. now, and um, meet you in Pittsburgh. <laughs> okay. Um, at the train station, presumably. Uh, that's fine with me. Okay. We can do it there on the airfield. Which would you prefer? If we're going for quickest possible uh, the, transfer airfield. The, the, the quickest would be uh, somewhere uh, near the train station mm-hmm. because that way I'm not diverting from where we anticipate the ladder going. Right. So we just uh, yeah, get to the roof of the train station, you drop off of the rope ladder and just grab it as you fly over. Sure. <laughs> Works for me. You gonna help carry? You like pull. <laughs> I might prefer the I I, I I I might prefer her elevator thing. I have a rope ladder. Yeah, but I have, have two. two I have two steamer trunks. Oh, then uh, cargo. Yeah, we'll tie them onto the end of the rope ladder. Then we can do okay. The, the, the cargo out. lift. Okay. Cargo lift shouldn't take enough longer to worry about. We uh, the there's no, there's no difficulty. You get to Pittsburgh just fine. Landing. <laughs> A good landing. Oh, right. well, certainly we would not. <laughs> not something I would complain about just now. <laughs> and the weather is fine on your on landing as well. She didn't hit a tree like that one time. <sighs> Well, that was because he didn't have one. That was because getting there sooner than I. So you might want to check out what the heck the potential routes are, so that uh, as, as we trace it, we can know if it goes off course. Supposedly, sure. the main uh, port for uh, delivery of mail to Australia is San Francisco. And for my map visualization I can't see any you either either going to Chicago or going to St. Louis would work given where 
rail rail lines probably go. We'll find out. <clears throat> Okay, well, I'm gonna have to do without George now. You're gonna have him fly the plane back? He'll have to fly the plane back. Freddy can't. Right. <laughs> so, we go off to, uh, Well, we'll go to the Pennsylvania Railroad. will have their own station. Mm -hmm. yep. So we just go there and we get to the roof of the station. Well, well, I yes, want to go in the to station do, we first. We have time to do the research for mail car. Yeah. Walk off on, uh, you know, wet. So you're going to roll for George flying the plane back? Okay. <laughs> Actually, he's a better pilot than I am. Yeah, but he doesn't have fate points. But he does not have fate points. So if he rolls so, really badly. Well, unless you go with that rule I found in the Eagle Hat website. Which is what? In a, a, a companion of average quality has one fate point. One of oh. fair is two fate points. One of good quality has three. Okay. One of great has four. That was something they think they added on because they realized that your companions were completely useless if they made up, you know, a cracker roll. Yeah. Fortunately, he's better at that's an average takeoff. Okay. Good enough. And Whether that is a right good there. flight. Okay. Ooh. Uh oh. That is a um Mediocre landing. Well, fortunately, it's something he can take time with. Yeah, I time he can take at a at a decent you know d decent so airfield in daylight. Okay. Mediocre should still be no damage yeah, there's, to the there's plane. No damage it's to the plane. It's just a really rough landing at, at mediocre. Mm -hmm. He's probably saying to himself, I'm, oh, "I'm glad Rick wasn't there to see that." <laughs> <laughs> so, what well, also means if you actually took time, does it mean? You basically Howard No, you fly past saying that you weren't crap, lined that up angle and is just come wrong back circle around, around yeah. and try again. Mm -hmm. And you take advantage of the ground effect. Mm -hmm. If you don't know You take it in low and slow. In face. I know what ground effect is, but you wouldn't hover because the plane would stall. You'd fly <laughs> by and come around again. But ground effect allows you to slow down and still maintain left. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ground effect you see is when you're within about 20 feet of, um, when you're within, if you take your wingspan and you cut it in half, and you're within that distance or lower, the ground effect will give you additional lift and you can cut your airspeed mm -hmm. and still yes. maintain that lift. It only happens, like you say, within half of, half of the wingspan. So if you do that, you get a bonus. In order to do it, it takes time. Mm Hence, -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I went to um, flight school. I, so, I, I determined that I was not going to fly an airplane. <laughs> I will, okay. If I want to risk my life, I'll ride my motorcycle. All right. So, so. Um, we get on the airship. Mm -hmm. and Did somebody I successfully got, do mail research? I got a great academics uh, role for find, finding out about uh, routes, mail travels to the west coast by, and the, the timing of, of different trains heading west from Pittsburgh, and uh -huh. stuff like that. I figure enough. it's, you know, there will be posted schedules, there will be, there will be people yeah. who are used okay. to being asked about trains, it shouldn't be that difficult. Technically, I have six sticks of dynamite. Like yeah. Why well, carry three sticks? all those weird people um, who are constantly asking questions about trains. <laughs> well, most of them because they want to catch a train, or because but they some of them they to... just want. This to know. They're not, just curious. This yeah. is not a unusual library request. It's unusual yeah. library request is. Well, I have to. It is where can I find the uh, the train so I can rob it? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh no! Yes, that would be an unusual request. <laughs> so, uh, what is the question that you're asking here? Um, okay, we know we know about when the train is, is getting in. 
Um, when when, when it left, we know when it left New York. Right. So so figuring out when that train is is due in at Pittsburgh is, mm-hmm. is almost trivial. When would the next train headed for St. Louis be leaving? When would the next train headed for Chicago be leaving? And are there any other routes uh, westward from here that they might send mail by? The last one I'm going to have um, to ask a human being. So, um, I'm guessing the first two I can just look at schedule boards. The train is, let's see, yes, it should be in the station at about 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's the train itself is continuing, is going to continue to head west. Okay. Um, it is headed for St. Louis. Okay. So, yeah, um, various tracking uh, tells uh, 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 tells tells us anything other than headed for St. Louis. Something, yes. something, if somebody, is going on. you know, yeah, somebody. Stole the man car or whatever. Or possibly if a uh, uh, well well placed and sufficiently trusted railroad employee just got into the mail car and knew where to walk for certain things. But well, or yeah. possibly there was a well trusted postal employee yeah. on the mail car. Right. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. And. Um, I will will also, since we are stationary and have a little breathing space, um, call um, check. Call my spirit companion. You better be ready to burn down the mail car. Ask him to, uh, as you know, as as long as uh, as long as the uh, you know as as long as the item is still on still on the same train. So it gets to Pittsburgh. It does get to Pittsburgh. There's nothing in the book that says that, Martin. There's nothing in this book. No. Consider consider it color. So, uh, yes, it gets into the station. It sits there for a while. Uh, As I said, there are passenger cars on this train as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it drops off passengers. Picks up passengers in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. uh, and then starts heading west again, mm-hmm. on a s- sort of west southwest mm-hmm. track. Okay. Yeah, there's um, mail cars always went with um, passengers. They did not go with freight generally. Yeah. Presumably because the passenger trains usually oh. make better time. I don't know why. Oh, that's just what it was. Okay. Amenities. Amenities. You want to be able to feed the guys who are actually sorting the mail back to that mail car and similar things. Mm. I'm not sure if they did any sorting in the mail car. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the mail car actually is receiving mail in Pittsburgh as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it probably picked up mail at other stations at along every the way. stop along the way. And also, in general, the passenger trains had... Uh, Preference over the freight trains for use of rail. Mm-hmm. So not that they do any more. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely don't now. Yeah, no, but uh, uh, that has to do with the nineteen fifties and sixties. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so, yeah, it's it's going to it's going to St. Louis. You can tell right, right as it, sure. it 
basically leaves the station, but that's where it's going. Okay? It's not suddenly veering off to Chicago or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we are now we are all on the airship and continuing to keep up with the train. And how are we getting the airship again? Um the train so, elevator? Yeah. Planet. I mean you had time. It yeah. wasn't like you, you know. Had a split second to do this. You had plenty of time. The plane got there well ahead of the train. So just and you got on top of the the uh, whatever the, one of the buildings. The building, mm -hmm. the, the rail station, and the uh, train had to swap passengers and load mm -hmm. coal and yeah. water. It was this is a major stop for it. It's mm -hmm. not it's not just a water stop. Mm -hmm. um, but it was probably. Probably at least half an hour of that sort of thing going yeah. on before and they roll. So out. you're all up on the airship. You, nobody needs yep. to climb a rope ladder. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you know, for you, I'm sure they'll be happy to you, drop a rope. Do you guys know the probable route from here? And uh, is there something we can do as far as predicting it so that uh, we don't have to keep watch on the instruments 24 hours? It should be heading for St. Louis from here, according to what I learned at the station, and did some, somebody else. Well, there's one bit of information. Yeah. Is it an express or a local? If it's an express, it's going to blow through small towns. And if it's a local, it's going to be stopping at all of them. And yes, we have to pay attention to the equipment. That would... That we just there's enough of us here that we can watch it 24 hours a day. Sure. Okay. I will take the night can. shift, obviously. Uh, I would have certainly found out whether it was an express or it's an express. Old. Okay, so it, it will stop in major cities, it's going to stop in Columbus and Indianapolis on its way to St. Louis. And there will doubtless be stops between St. Louis and San Francisco, but not. You're well, it's not going to be on the same railroad right, when right. it gets west of St. Louis. Yeah. Um, all kinds of railroads are going oh, from yeah. that point. Yes, there will be more more than more than one uh, rail line running between uh, St. Louis and San Francisco it could be or the, parts of Northern the Pacific, right. the Great Northern, could be the Rio Grande. I don't think the Southern Pacific got that far west. East. I don't know. Not I know a lot more trains around the East Coast. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So, what are we doing? Are we going to fly to St. Louis on the airship? Or, oh, go. or are we going to tra track yeah. along with the train? Is that what's happening? The train. Okay. We have to stay within, I think it was 30 miles to be kept. Okay. So. Yeah. No point it, trying to get ahead of the train at this point. We've got both, you know, both equipment and comfortable quarters. As well <laughs> so, as yes. Stick with the train. I'll, I'll wire up the station in the... Uh, guest area so that the tracking can be done there as well sure okay is that a difficulty make make an engineering role okay it's, it's probably not a difficulty but it's uh, yeah. uh that would be great i think okay we don't have any problem at all yeah, great. It's about an hour, but you know, whoop you do. <laughs> and uh, we'll just have to uh, get you checked through my security process. <laughs> Whatever it takes. And my pilot will show you the controls. I've, I've flown your airship before. Did you? Yes. I don't recall that. Okay. When we made that trip down to the Caribbean. Oh, 
Yes, you're right. I just trying to get that big can. Well, there the hasn't been there hasn't been that many changes since then. That's because the backup camera didn't work. <laughs> really, constant tinkerer. Yes. <laughs> she would describe it that way. <laughs> it's not meant. There haven't been that many changes since then. Possibly, there have been no changes to the piloting systems since uh, then. I don't believe that. <laughs> well, well, we had to take out the uh, the drive. It was drawing way too much power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. There is no problem mm -hmm. tracking a train from the airship. There's no bad weather. You don't hit any bad weather, so mm -hmm. just generally flying along is not a problem. Nobody okay. really has to make rolls or anything. Um... So, no, um, as I said, it's an express, so it's stopping for what it needs to, and then longer, like the Pittsburgh stop is going to be in Columbus and Indianapolis. Yeah. Um, so it's overnight, mm -hmm. um, and now it's uh, morning. Nothing well, really happened, <coughs> unless somebody wants to do something. I'll take whatever shifts I need to, to help watch the, the tracking device. I don't how's know your, when they are. How's your site? Hmm? I'll take the one that ends the fourth. Okay. How's your science with your question? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm in science at average. Okay. I'm, I'm capable, perfectly capable then, of you know monitoring equipment and letting yep. somebody else know if something changes. Yep. Well, it was just you're that I know you're saying you're going to do something during that that evening. long stretch of time, you know, night, uh, uh -huh. evening, nighttime, morning. after dinner time. Okay. The uh, Cornelia tracking ring, yes, is going to get an add-on to it, a um, a a remind me to contact Cornelia. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm so it's so an improvement. It's, so it's an improvement. What what is it starting at? It's currently at great. Okay. I believe. Yeah, it would have to be good and then go to great. Well, no, it's it's it was yes, it was it was it was good and it had one improvement on it already, so it's great to, going to yes, yeah, yeah. just the first. So it's going to, it's great going to first. Okay. And I roll on inspiring. <laughs> okay, well then. <laughs> I didn't take very long. Four yeah. shifts. Four shifts down from eight hours. One, two, three, four. It's 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, but well that's you a noticeable amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> but just not a lot. Well, Your coffee you almost get cool. the intervals, or, or is it? Well, I, I, I think, think it should be that. basically when she gets worried. <laughs> it um, is mystery space. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's not quite. <laughs> it's it's possible. It's going to, um. It's gonna start tingling at about a day and a half, but if she gets worried, it's going to heat up. Okay. It's okay. Better than having Oreo whining constantly. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go talk to the guy in the cook, the guy in the hole. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, the guy who's really tired of being yes. in the hole down in the cargo area. Uh, yep. Uh, I will even introduce Simon to him. Yeah. He's he met Simon. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> he's the one who's gonna solve. Your living arrangement. Good, because I really hate living here. <laughs> so. Don't ask Jack for a solution. You want one for you. I'm going to be making something that you're going to have to wear for the rest of your life. Uh, is it something very large or noticeable or... Oh. Possibly a ring, possibly oh. a... Okay, you know. that's fine then. <laughs> so, you know, 
And the question is, um, what right, would we'll you like it? <laughs> a ring would be just fine. Okay. I will put it on my hand and never take it off. Right. Because yeah. when you take it off, whatever will realize that you're there and come get you. Uh, okay, that's probably not a good thing. Yeah, that's... I don't want that to deadly. happen. It's I kind of a that, deadly thing. So, yes. So. Okay. Um, I should be able to get that done sometime tomorrow. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, he doesn't actually say cool. He says, great, yes, yes. wonderful. And we can drop him off at the next large city after that if he wants. Wow, how exciting. Where are you dropping him off? Let's see. Um... St. Louis or before St. Louis? <laughs> when did we get to St. Louis? It, it, okay, so... Um, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. 10 a.m. You're hitting St. Louis at 10 a.m. Okay. So you're still probably going to be asleep. Oh, I'm going to be virtuous and wake up. Oh my goodness. Jack's going to be asleep. <laughs> All right. I'm going to arrange for somebody to wake up me and James at 7. Yeah. <laughs> That's no problem. Yeah, I didn't think it would be. James would be going, 7 o'clock? Really? <laughs> what what do you, the hell? Do they and, still make this time of day? <laughs> well, there's also a certain amount of, we're on this airship. What are we going to do with the evening? Yeah, it's not like you're going partying anymore. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is. We're, uh, we're going to be going, we're going to be partying in the airship and throwing our empty beer cans out the window. <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. Uh, Among other things, they don't can beer at this time. <laughs> they didn't throw the bottles just, out there. Just as there bad. We go. That That's would even break better. Security and <laughs> yeah, it's, you you really can't stealth those bottles once they leave the airship. <laughs> <laughs> and Annie would not be amused. <laughs> she really wouldn't. <laughs> so we'll get up about this. We'll get up about seven, and then we'll start working on this ring about eight. Uh, okay. Um, is anything else happening in that evening, in the evening of the 16th, I believe it was? I'm right. piloting an airship. <laughs> that's what's happening. Well, that's, that's, that's not a real easy. active thing. As I said, it's an airship, you're not hitting bad weather, mm -hmm. there are no rolls necessarily. <laughs> yeah. Well, it has Jack keeping the company up front, because that's where the other uh, main detector is. No, I wired one... To Back the into the guest quarters. Guest yes, but I quarters. went up there to keep him company. Oh, he said the main one, not the auxiliary one that you wired up in the guest quarters. Well, then either Annie has to lead you through security to get up to the piloting area, or you have to make a bunch of rolls to get past the security. Might as well bring me with him. <clears throat> Oh, what always... if she doesn't want to? <laughs> what if she doesn't why, want why, you there? Why do you need to be in the pilot's compartment? Just in case he falls asleep. I can wake him up. He's trustworthy. Okay, don't let me crash. I'm, I'll remind you of this. <clears throat> I don't think he's going to crash, okay? Even uh, if he falls asleep, he just kind of veer off course slowly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose if he fell asleep and then leaned heavily on the stick. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, don't I do think that. Would, I think you might roll him out. <laughs> you know, don't roll a minus four and then spend a fate point to go two more down because then you will crash into the ground. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's why I said crash, not just gently bump into the ground. <laughs> Thermos of coffee, a couple of sandwiches. I'm good. Uh huh. You're already over to France. Do you have a preferred brand in your past? <laughs> no. no. Actually, I prefer tea, but you know. That's oh, they do good tea. Yes, they do good tea, but it doesn't have enough caffeine in it. So. One of my staff is a chef. Yeah. And is it said chef from India? Yes. Well, I certainly don't want to... Or, no, your... she's Philippine. Her husband is in here. Okay. I certainly don't want to leave your chef feeling unfulfilled, so if they would like to surprise me with something, I certainly would not object. Totally into self-actualization. Should, 
shit. Probably rejoice. What? <laughs> Every opportunity to do something other than goulash or... <laughs> or it's German foods. Uh-huh. Um... Sure. I'm going to say that nothing exciting yeah, happens until the morning, <laughs> until 7 a.m. when Simon wakes up. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, you're awake. So I arrange for breakfast. I arrange to have something for breakfast. Okay. We have breakfast, and then we go off and start enchanting at 8. All right. You had, a, you had what you wanted to enchant on your dome already. You, you wrote it somewhere, didn't you? Okay, what did I do? You... I had the notes there that I was researching this, and I discussed it with you. Yeah, I thought you wrote something down. About... Most people try cutting their throat down. <laughs> yeah, I don't what know. What is going on? I don't know what it is. It was a, a small pimple-like sore mm-hmm. yesterday. I looked in the bathroom mirror, and it's like, Bleeding a little bit. I must have scratched it after the night. Oh, okay. <sighs> mm-hmm. And so well, it was, but it was a, on anything. It was basically a out of it later. concealed guy. Concealed the guy from. Mm-hmm. His, his, from, from the thing that's. Okay. From Dirt. the specific thing that's. From the specific thing that's enforcing the contract. Okay. If somebody else wants to look for him, fine. But it's the thing that's enforcing the contract. Yeah. Doesn't know what doesn't know what his state is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you can do it with a protective circle, you should be able to do it with a ring. You yeah. already already know the parameters. Okay. So this one is a good going to great. Yeah. And James is helping? Alright. So that is a legendary. Okay. It's another 15 minute enchantment. All right. <laughs> so you were already west of Indianapolis, which was the last major stop before St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Um, guess he's going to St. Louis. Now. Guess he's going to St. Louis. Yep. Do, does anybody remember his name? Nope, I do not. I don't. I could look for it, but I, I have the you know way too many sheets of paper problem. Right. Let's see. Do, anybody what? remember when we took him? I on was board? I was going to say what oh, wow. was you know what what was what was he doing when we captured him? Was he one of the people? Not working here. What? Well, we're yeah, no, here. but we I all mean, do that. Right. But was he one of the people involved in trying to shell that that vacation home that we set off as bait? Or no, no, it was before that. that. Oh, oh. No, it was after that. No, it was before that. Ah, okay. Damn, I... <laughs> I have a note here where Jack intimidates the whole room. <laughs> um, yeah. Well... Yeah. I do not like. Those are in another notebook, and unlike you, I don't have them here. <laughs> but whatever his name is, yes, not your name. Does not really matter mm-hmm. when you pick no, him up right. or what his name is. As a matter of fact, neither of those matter. It was after Kiros left, I believe. The, the the one question that might matter is, <clears throat> um. Is he a Russian officer who had not been in this country very long when we picked him up? Or is he someone who's already an so experienced agent? Was we're letting him go? Yes. 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 I will say that he speaks English, and that's all that really matters. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys it's, don't it's, care it's, if he has a hard true. time getting home. Yeah. <laughs> well, he might be better off not trying to get home. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if he'd be willing to consider I, that option. I will give him a blindfold to wear as we take him off, and then I will 
So uh, so he doesn't see anything the of airship. the airship that he hasn't seen already. Okay. And then uh, what? What's he's the he's in the cargo area. Yeah. So yeah. Looks so there's, the a, cargo there's, there's a freight elevator mm. from the cargo directly from the cargo That's elevator. That's true. Elevator. Yeah. You can just you're step, concerned step about over there, there and the elevator goes there. down. Okay, yeah. He's so not really level. seeing anything except okay. maybe the underside of of. Almost invisible. invisible air yeah, so yeah. he's not seeing anything. Okay. I give him a hundred dollars for seed money. Okay. And I tell him where there's a couple of uh and I, I, Russian I assure you he's heard of St. Louis. Before. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, a couple of Russian uh not collectors, communities. Okay. So that he doesn't feel places where expats have settled. Yep. All right. Yeah. North of here is a place called Minneapolis. <laughs> there are a lot of Russians here, I know. There were. Minneapolis St. Paul has been a constant hub for taking in the latest batch of immigrants. All right. So. Yay. Thank you, Simon. Yes, that is now one annoying problem that is off your we, plate now. Now, <laughs> now we can uh, scrub that circle away. Yep. So from the point of view of whatever might be looking for him, something invisible continued to be invisible. Right. He put on the ring and then he stepped out then of the circle, the circle and yep. he was... He remained equally unnoticeable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so um, we're in St. Louis. The uh, mail car gets detached from the train that it was attached to. Yes, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's left on a siding for about uh, four hours. It just sits in St. Louis for four mm -hmm. hours, and then uh, it gets uh, moved and attached to another train. Um, so I am not an expert on trains, but um, I can tell you I have a few suggestions. It, I'll I'll yeah, I'll tell you what I think it is, and you can tell me if that's baloney or not. Union Pacific. That's a good train. Okay. Yes, that's what I thought. I thought I I was pretty sure Union Pacific went as far east as St. Louis, and I know it goes to San Francisco. Oh yes, it's, <laughs> it's based in California. Right, the but it has Pacific. but it has rail lines as far east as St. Louis and Chicago. Yes, it was the that was the train line that went to Promissory Point in the west. Yeah, so it attaches to a Union Pacific train, and you're pretty sure you know. It's going to just stay yeah. attached to that train until it gets to San Francisco. And all our different tracking methods all show the items. The item is still on that train car. Oh. But it's only been a couple of days since it left. Yep. Um, since it left uh, New Jersey. So. so and, and our so illustrious ghost is not Yeah, so he's still, still on that. that so, yeah. So he's still on the job. Once we have which train it is. Get the schedule for that train. Okay. Route, and then we'll catch up to it in the airship. Right. Why do we have to catch up to it? Because it, oh. by the time we know which one it is, it's leaving. We get the schedule. Ah, right. We we could <laughs> we could just track it, but we might as well get the schedule information in case it's useful to know. Yeah. Okay, so this this way we can actually plan out shifts and where it's right. likely to deviate, and if it deviates before that, well, that's why we have tracking. Yep. Yeah. So the the cities it's going to stop in are Kansas City, mm -hmm. Denver, hmm. uh, Salt Lake City, and. Uh, then it doesn't stop till it hits San Francisco. The West has has so few big cities in 1924. Right. <laughs> it's 
It's not going to stop in Reno. That's no. nothing right now, basically. So, <laughs> we now know the anticipated route. Yeah. Great. Knowing it, we will make the appropriate plans as far as logistics go. Okay. And I am going to call it for the night. Sure. Okay. And okay. <clears throat> just leaving St. Louis following a pack in glass for 44. I don't think I spent any. I took 46. I am fairly sure I spent nothing. <laughs> And good night to everybody who good is night. watching the stream. Uh, it's here. Oh, good.